Big welcome to Waco, Texas, Floyd Casey Stadium. It's a Big 12 finale between Oklahoma State and Baylor. Greg Bowler, Jack, along with Joel Klatt. So glad you're with us on this first day of December. Offense will not be in short supply today, and Baylor, their top threat, lines up outside. And he's explosive. We're talking about Terrence Williams, Bolitnikoff Award finalist. This guy's one of the best in the country. There's no doubt about it. He's big, he's strong, and he is very athletic. He's trying to become just the second wide receiver in NCAA history to catch for over 2,000 yards in a season. Quarterback Nick Florence loves throwing to him, and Nick Florence has done a great job of coming in and not replacing Robert Griffin III, but just playing quarterback within himself. Clint Shelf for Oklahoma State. He's going to get the start for the Cowboys. He started the season as the third quarterback on the depth chart. This guy has come in and really stabilized this offense. He's got him running smoothly. Mike Gundy again brings a top five offense into Baylor. Sometimes the difference between a win and a loss can be just one play. Just one moment, one instant can take a team from joy to despair. Last week in that moment, the Baylor Bears celebrated a heart-stopping win while the Oklahoma State Cowboys suffered a heartbreaking loss. One play, one moment, one instant, one more game. College football on Fox is next. Fox College football is presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And Darius Walker is our sideline insider at Floyd Casey Stadium today. Today, And Darius, these two teams, oh yes, they pass the football, but they can run the football as well. Yeah, that's a great point. They, they might equally be as impressive running the football on the offensive side of the ball. Oklahoma State is led by their running back, Joseph Randall. And right now, he leads the Big 12 in rushing yards per game at 110. On the flip side for Baylor, they're led by a two-headed monster in Lake Sea Shrunk and Glasgow Martin. Right now, those guys offensively are leading the Big 12 in rushing yards per game at 217. So in a game like a shootout today, it's going to come down to ball control. And that means the running game is going to be key once again for both these teams. All right, Darius, Mike Gundy leads Oklahoma State into Baylor, the reigning Big 12 coach of the year. His counterpart today, Art Bryles, in his fifth year here in Waco, bowl bound again with a record of 6-5. and five. Baylor won the toss and chose to defer. So Oklahoma State will start this game. And Aaron Jones will try to tee it up on Joel. What is a windy day in Waco, Texas? Going right to left. They'll be kicking with the wind right here, which means Oklahoma State and Clint Jelf has got the opportunity to open up into the wind. Never fun for a quarterback. The only people that really care about the wind, quarterbacks and kickers. They're talking about it in the, in the locker room, though, before the game. Trust me. Here we go. Underway in Waco. Justin Gilbert. Tripped up at the 25-yard line. And Joel, our Taco Bell impact players. I'm going to stick with Josh Stewart. He's been on fire of late. Six games, his last six games, he's averaging right around 10 catches per and 100 yards. Lane Taylor, All-American candidate up front in the offensive line. And then on defense, Calvin Barnett. He was a guy that originally committed to Oklahoma State and then decommitted, signed with Arkansas, went to junior college. Now he's back with the Cowboys, and he's their best defensive lineman up front. Oklahoma State starts their first drive at the 25 and a half yard line, and they'll start on the ground. Joseph Randall. He'll spin out of a tackle and picks up six, maybe seven on first down. Randall, 113 yards last week against Oklahoma. Chelf, 61% completion percentage. You're the old quarterback. Good numbers, 15 touchdowns, just five interceptions. And Oklahoma State last week when Chelf passed that 1,000-yard mark became just the first team in Big 12 history to have three quarterbacks throw the ball for over 1,000 yards. It was a pickup of eight, second down, two and short. Three play as they toss it out to Austin Hayes, the true freshman out of San Antonio. So they start on the ground. They go to the air. We'll see plenty of that mix and match today for O State. Good feet from Chelf in the pocket right away. This is this high tempo offense. Oklahoma State loves, loves to get that vanilla defensive look. A pick up the 15. This time they run right up the gut and the heart and soul of Baylor's front line of Mason and Johnson. Lackey, the weak side will linebacker with the stop. This defense has a huge task today. 
They are 119th in total defense. There's only 120 teams in the FBS, so tall task stopping one of the best offenses in college football. Knows that that ball just passed midfield at the 49-yard line. Shelf good protection, throws up top, caught inside the 35-yard line. And into a heavy breeze, that ball hung just a little bit, but the catch pulled down by Blake Jackson. Really nice throw, Chelf into the wind, and he delivers this ball accurately. Look at that, tight spiral, good RPMs. Jackson brings it down for the first down. A gain of 14, back on the ground. Jeremy Smith gets the carry, and he'll bull his way near the 30-yard line. They're winning first down right now, Craig, in this opening series. Oklahoma State allowing Clint Shelf the opportunity to sit in there without a pass rush. Playing base defense is forcing Baylor to be vanilla so far. Unable to get any pressure on the quarterback. That's why we've seen him be able to step up and throw those nice passes over the crop, over the secondary. Five plays, 44 yards, just under two minutes off the clock. Here at Baylor. Shelf, quick throw. Far side, pitch and catch. Hayes with his second catch and another reception moves the chains at the 22 yard line. Joel, the Cowboys have great success on their first possessions. 45 points scored, seven touchdowns, one field goal this season. That's just good game planning from Mike Gundy and the offensive staff. Todd Monken, the play caller, really doing their homework on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, which allows them to have success on Saturday afternoon. Ball's on the Baylor 22-yard line. Chelf, one-step drop, throws a slant on the button. And the catch again, Jackson with his second grab. A junior out of Gilbert, Arizona. Came in with 25 catches, a couple of touchdowns, and nearly 530 yards of re reception yards. Well, last year, he was an All-American in junior college. Transfer from Scottsdale Community College. Played near his home. Gets to Oklahoma State. Real physical guy. 6'3", 235 pounds. Four wide receivers set set on second down and three. They hit the edge with Staley, the fullback. That's Josh Stewart, pardon me. Stewart with the carry, number five. A little jet sweep. Tavon Austin made this play famous this year, that little jet sweep where the quarterback actually flips it to him. It goes not as a run, but as a pass. And Josh Stewart, the perfect type of guy for that play. 5'10", 178 pounds. Can make you miss in a phone booth. First and ten. Patience on the edge. Push out of bounds is Randall. About 5.2 yards a carry. 14 touchdowns. The number one ranked Big 12 rusher. And Joel, 110 yards a game. And the common misconception with both of these teams is that they throw the ball every play. And it's just all the time an air raid attack. But they run the football. Joseph Randall, one of the best in the conference to do it. Had a great game last year against Baylor. Second down, after a pickup with T, lob it up top. There's some contact in the end zone. That ball is dropped. Jackson's been the go-to guy on this offensive series, and good defense by Casey. Casey did a great job of getting contact late into that route, which didn't allow Jackson to get his hands up and ultimately focus on that. See how that left hand was late getting to the ball? That's ultimately what caused Jackson to drop that ball. Now a huge third down for the Cowboys on their first series. Still have an opportunity to move the chains inside the one-yard line. 11th play of this drive. This is the first third down on this drive as we open here in Waco. Chill. Flags. Offense, five-yard penalty, third down. That's Parker Graham, Joel, the left tackle. Our referee today is Greg Burks. If needed, replay official upstairs is David Ames. And that brings up third down and long. You know what, offensively, as a quarterback, that penalty actually helped Oklahoma State out because now they got more room to the back of the end zone to work and try to get separation with their cover. Shelf play action, slant across the middle, well read, Josh Stewart is knocked down maybe a yard and that brings up fourth down yeah i'm surprised that they went with that bullet screen because they have not speaking of baylor gotten any sort of pass rush so far in this game and chelp has been able to just stand in the pocket and pick them apart down the field so on a third down in which they need a bunch of yards to get the ball out of his hand very quickly i i felt like it didn't give him an opportunity to really attack that coverage down the field quinn sharp a three-time all-american 
will try a 31-yard field goal this season, 23 of 29. So a 31-yard attempt. That's the luxury of having Quinn Sharp. Pretty much every team in America would have just called a timeout in order to save the yards, especially kicking in the wind. But they've got the three-time All-American, first among kickers in terms of scoring. Quinn Sharp, this should be no problem, even though it's a 37-yard field goal into the wind. Between the hashes. Officially 36, low snap kicks up. And good from 36. So Quinn Sharp scores and puts Oklahoma State on the board. And when we come back, our first look at the electrifying Terrence Williams. 89 receptions, 12 touchdowns. Baylor on deck next. I'm going in. Oklahoma State strikes first on a 12-play, 55-yard drive as Quinn Sharp boots a 36-yard field goal into the win. Four and a half minutes off the clock to start this game. But a good win for Baylor because uh, Oklahoma State's so good in the red zone, and yet they were still able to force a kick. I think in this game, it's going to be a little bit like tennis in the fact that you just got to break serve. Both these offenses so good, so high-powered. Forcing a kick of any kind, even if that's a field goal attempt and they get three points, that's a quality defensive series for Phil Bennett and the Baylor Bears. Sharp, 69 touchbacks in college football this season. That ranks number one in the NCAA and into the win. Still drives this ball a yard deep. Goodly brings it out for Baylor. Stacked up and dropped just inside the 20-yard line at the 19-yard line. And let's take a look again at our Taco Bell Impact players. Uh, starts on the outside with Terrence Williams. He is just flat a beast. He is a big guy and a mismatch at all times. Ivory Wade last year played tackle for RG3. Now he moved inside, and he's the center for Nick Florence. He makes all the offensive line calls in the middle. And Eddie Lackey, as a linebacker, last week was the Big 12's defensive player of the week. Had an interception in that big win over Texas Tech up in Jerry's World in Dallas. That was 52-45 and a wild one against the Red Raiders. Shotgun as we saw it with Florence. So throw far side, and that ball dropped at the 20-yard line. And through the hands of a very talented wide receiver, Terrence Williams. I was talking before the game with Bill Young, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma State, and he said what makes it so tough to try to bracket or double cover Terrence Williams is the fact that their pacing is so fast. You've got to play vanilla defense. Both of these teams want to snap it somewhere between 90 and 95 times in any given game. That's what makes it so tough on these defenses. Second down, 10. Florence wants to throw. Wide open, 40-yard line. One tackle broken. Williams after the drop. First down, move the chains to the 46-yard line. 90th reception on the year for Terrence Williams. Watch this stem right there, and then he breaks to the outside. No chance for Justin Gilbert, a terrific route runner. It's one thing to be more athletic than everybody on the field. It's another when you're a technician like Terrence Williams. Terrific route. A gain of 27 yards. Baylor once more. Quick throw on the hands of Norwood. Levi Norwood last week with a 39-yard score against Texas Tech. Did I mention Baylor is the fifth highest scoring team in the nation at 44.4? Then did I mention Oklahoma State is 45.6, number three, to be a shootout in Waco. Down to the 42-yard line, Seastrunk. Had a nice game last week, Joel, against Tech with 136 yards on 19 touches. And he's added a... a Great explosive dimension to this Baylor offense. A transfer from Oregon, had to sit out last year, so he hasn't played since high school. It's his first year playing since then. But late in this season, he's been fantastic. Cut back, middle of the field. I love what he did there. You see that hole that he saw. He takes it to the corner of the formation, really forcing that run back box to the outside, and then he cuts back inside the defender always with a forward lean and gets five yards. You saw that stat, the top two scoring teams in Big 12, in the Big 12 Conference. That ball batted down to the line of scrimmage. 
getting your hands up is so important. That's Ryan Robinson, the senior from Buford, Georgia. And he knows that that ball is going to be out of Nick Florence's hands quick most of the time. Getting your hands up is imperative against Baylor. Five wide receivers set on third down and five. Look how far they are spread in this formation. Rarely do you see two players outside of the numbers for the Baylor Bears. That is a lot of field to cover defensively. They convert 46% of the time on third downs. And the old keeper. That's exactly what it does. I just talked about the formation creating space in the middle of the field. And then, guess what? No levels. Look at that hole. Easy blocks for the offensive line. They get up to the second level, and it's an easy conversion for Nick Florence. Bader, hurry up with a pitch and catch. Norwood bumped out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Oklahoma State, Joel, I'm watching the sideline. They're trying to rotate substitutions in as fast as they can. Very difficult to do. Very difficult, and... I Art Bryles is one of the smartest in the business. You watch the percentage of plays that go towards the Baylor bench so that it makes it easier for him to substitute and go quickly and more difficult for the defense to do so. He's a very intelligent guy. Second down, two Florence on the play action and through behind, incomplete. Williams, the intended receiver. You know, Bill Young, the coordinator you spoke to, he told us hard to play defense in this conference because of the number of snaps. Last week, Oklahoma State on the field, 103 plays against OU. Glasgow Martin gets a carry. No gain, and that's Caleb Levy with the tackle, the middle linebacker. And he times the snap perfectly. Do you see how he jumps over a gap to his right, times the snap perfectly on his blitz, and gets in there for the stop. Fourth and four. They were trying to draw him off sides, and now Art Baylor is furious. He's going to have to take a timeout right now. He thought that he got the offsides call. Timeout. Wasn't able to get it. Now he's got a decision. Try to tie the score or go for it and keep his offense on the field. Fox College Football is sponsored by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. Art Bryles has made his decision, Joel Klatt. Let's put a toe on the football on fourth down. Aaron Jones, this will be a 39-yard attempt. His career in this stadium, 65%, 22 of 34. He's got the wind behind him. Aaron Jones did have three misses last week, Craig, so you wonder if that's entered into the mental psyche of Aaron Jones. Near hash kicks up. And good from 39. So Baylor and Oklahoma State, they've traded early field goals. 3-3 our score in Waco. The Big Ten Championship will kick off later today on Fox, and two of the best running backs, Joel, in the nation will be featured in that game. We invite you to tell us what you think and vote on the college football social poll of the week. Which senior running back is the most NFL-ready? Log on to Facebook.com backslash Fox Sports to cast your vote. Poll results will air a little later today in Fox College Football. I do like Jonathan Franklin. Oh, he was great last night, wasn't he? That Pac-12 championship game. I thought UCLA outplayed Stanford, but I would go with Stephon Taylor because of the st system that he ran. You know, Franklin had all that space, kind of like with Michael James at Oregon in, in that Noel Mazzoni offense at UCLA. And Stephon Taylor, he knows how to grind it out in between the tackles. He's got that. He's got that Harbaugh edge to him. You know, kind of like Darius Walker. I remember him <laughs> running the field. Darius, the wind down there. It seems like it co it's causing problems right now. Yeah, guys, it is a nice day here in Waco, but the wind has really picked up. Right now, it's at 15 miles per hour, and it seems to have affected the play calling a little bit for both sides. We're seeing a lot of out routes, hitches, not a lot of deep balls. So both coaches being a little bit conservative and really calling plays for the win. That's a great point, especially when you're going into the win. You know, I could see Baylor maybe taking a shot. But Darius is exactly right. I think that's my BY Oklahoma State ran that quick screen on third down on their last offensive play in their last series. On a boot, picked, goodbye, walking in, touchdown, Baylor, Lackey. Are we watching a rerun? 
of last week against Texas Tech. Two picks, a fumble recovery, and Mr. Lackey had a 55-yard touchdown return. This week, 25 on a pick six. I think my man caught that with one hand. That was in his left hand. Eddie Lackey, the reigning defensive player of the week, with two interceptions, a fumble recovery last week. He comes up with a huge play for Baylor early in this game. Point after attempt. Through the uprights by Aaron Jones. Lackey, a pick six. Baylor on top by seven. Fox College Football is sponsored by the Buick Verano. Unexpected luxury in a car this size. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 50% or more on car insurance. And by the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. Learn more at drpepper.com. Lackey, what a couple of weeks Joel he's had. Last week a pick six. This week he rumbles in from 26 yards. It's a 10-3 Baylor lead. This is a very similar pattern to a lot of junior college players. He comes in from Riverside as a JUCO transfer. And it's just a different game at this level. The Big 12 puts a lot of pressure on defenses. And it's a mental strain on guys that don't understand the league. And so the learning curve is steep at first. But you can tell Eddie Lackey has settled in. Really understands the game well. Justin Gilbert brings it out. Second, third effort, and they'll mark him down to the 25-yard line. Let's look outside. I think Chris McAllister, he really brought the heat on, on Chelp. He did. He's the defensive end, and this is what this allows him to do, is there's no flow from the defense on the play-action fake, and Lackey's able to stay out on Josh Stewart and be covering him inside the passing lane. So a terrific game plan already devised by Phil Bennett. Dropping that safety down, no flow over the top against play action, allowing their guys to cover on the outside. See if Chelf and Oklahoma State can bounce back. That was the fifth pick thrown by Chelf this season. On the ground they go with Joseph Randall. Maybe a yard to the 25 and a half yard line. Randall, 1,212 yards on the season for the junior running back out of Wichita, Kansas. Jolie's had seven games over 100 yards this season. Charlie Moore goes in motion. I think you're seeing this run game being called right now because of that last interception. They saw that they weren't affecting the defense, so they know they've got to get after it in the run game. On the ground, they go again to Randall. Breaks it. Gets in that second level to the 46-yard line. Now, remember this club, Oklahoma State, they averaged 215 yards, Joel, on the ground. Five and a half, nearly five and a half yards a carry. Randall is just such a good and powerful back. 6'1", 200 pounds, very stout and quick. Perfect combination for a running back. Five first downs. For the Cowboys, middle of that pile again, Randall, maybe a half a yard the hard way. He was knocked down by Chadwick and McAllister. Ahmad Dixon, the junior, also in there. He's the most athletic of the second level players. You're going to see him out on the wide receivers quite a bit. 40 yards thus far on the ground for the Cowboys. They bring Jeremy Smith on the field as well in the backfield. Long time to throw, and it pays off. Chelf sets up in that pocket and fires a strike to Josh Stewart. And what you got to understand as a wide receiver is the fact that you've got to continue your route. If you're going to get time in the pocket, see how he continues to run across the field and allows Chelf to hit him all the way on the other side of the hash. Good continuation of the route by Josh Stewart. Jeremy Smith out of the backfield, tripped up, nearly broke it on the edge to the 39-yard line. <laughs> Sam Hall came up from the safety spot out of Katy, Texas. This defense is just completely different than the defense we saw 
way earlier this season against West Virginia. They were hanging their heads that day. Wasn't a whole lot of effort on the field, and now they're flying around. They've got some confidence, playing much better football. Second down, eight, and a play action. Shelf sets up, throws. Has a man corner, and it's a little over thrown incomplete down near the five yard line. Josh Stewart, the intended receiver, the inside receiver. Good coverage by Hicks, but that ball a little bit overthrown. Tough into the wind, because sometimes you get that perfect spiral and then it takes off on you because you're trying to throw it a little bit harder into that stiff breeze. Ball got away from Chelf. He had Stewart. He was open deep. Baylor last in the conference, last in the country on third down efficiency defense. Third down eight. Two wides, near side. Chelf shotgun. Five to snap, got it away. Two step drop, balls up, incomplete, fourth down. McAllister tipped the pass, so he was pressuring on that last interception, and this time got his hands up and knocks it down. Yeah, the defensive end have been active in the pass game. You know, they haven't gotten to Chelf necessarily rushing the passer, but active on the play action, forcing the interception. Phil Bennett allowing those defensive ends to be more of spies in this game plan. Leaping up now to tip the ball. Good game plan right there. Allow Chelf to sit in the pocket, but when the opportunity arises, affect the play by spying the quarterback. Timeout. As they're ready to try Sharp with a 56-yard punt. Cowboys want to talk about it. We'll be back. Ten three Baylor. I know this will not be a punt. This will be a 56-yard attempt if Mike Gundy decides to stay with that plan. And why not? What a foot! The three-time All-American. Now they're going to punt. So they decide after the timeout not to punt or not to kick. Now they punt. <laughs> High hanger. Beautiful kick. Takes a big bounce inside the 10. Look at that. Two yard line. So forget the field goal. How about the punt? Inside the five, college football's biggest championship games are on Fox tonight. It's the Big Ten Championship as 12th ranked Nebraska battles Wisconsin with a trip to the Rose Bowl on the line. Coverage of the Big Ten title game begins at 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific, only on Fox. Nebraska has won six straight games. Struggled a bit last week with Iowa. I was surprised to see that, especially after Michigan handled Iowa the, the week before. But eighth in the country, rough, rushing the football with Taylor Martinez. It should be a, a ground attack tonight with Wisconsin, Monte Ball, Taylor Martinez, and Rex Burkhead from Nebraska. It should be very interesting. Can't wait for that ball game. Nick Florence has to stand five yards deep in his own end zone. Glasgow Martin breaks out in some breathing room at the 11. And this is how they describe Glasgow Martin. They say he's a heavy runner and he runs angry. Well, this was the definition of both, right? They're packed up in your own end zone, forward lean behind your pads. Getting some yardage and breathing room, exactly like you said, Craig, for the offense. And now the first first down of the series. Your goal backed up. If you're inside the five-yard line, get two first downs. That's the goal backed up for any offense. Martin last week, 98 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And the win against Texas Tech. Florence throws. On the hands, Williams at the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. And that's enough for a first down. Justin Gilbert on the stop. Oklahoma State has not affected this offense whatsoever. They've been able to just go right down the field with the exception of that fourth down play on their first series. Well, barely got the handoff to Martin. Put a hand down at the 31 yard line. Watch this cut. I, I mean, I thought he was dead to rights in the backfield, and then he just slips through two Oklahoma State defenders and ends up going for about four yards. What an impressive run there from Martin. You know what? That's an angry run. <laughs> Where's the heaviness to that run? Ball is tipped and drops. Off the hands of the tight end, Niver. 
This is Tyler Johnson, number 40. You see how he takes on that block and still affects quarterback Nick Florence, getting his hands up in the air, forcing Nick Florence to floor, throw that ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to. Five wide receivers for Baylor on third down and long. Florence takes a glance sideline. Under four minutes to play in the quarter, they're up seven. Florence flush from the pocket on the run. They'll tuck it. First down, 40-yard line. So he went through three Cowboys. He is a gritty guy. Listen, no one's going to mistake Nick Florence and Robert Griffin III as far as talent goes. Okay, we, we understand that. But this kid comes in here, and he is a gritty, tough guy. 11 yards on the pickup. First down, half slant in and out of the hands. And that's incomplete. Levi Norwood, the intended receiver. Art Bryles told us, you do not want to play cards against this guy. He'll steal all your money. Nick Florence, just a steely guy. Never changes his expression. Just a gritty, determined competitor. Art Bryles said there's a difference between playing with a guy and for a guy. His teammates play for him. Second down, 10. Florence, two-step drop, throws it. Cutting up the middle. Kevin Reese, 47th reception, 800 yards now of receiving yards on the year for Reese. I love the rhythm so far for Baylor. I mean, just really quick. This they're drive. going fast, but they don't seem like they're in a hurry. It's, it's really quality football. This drive started on the two-yard line. They're at the Oklahoma State 47, Florence up top to the 40. On the hands of Williams. He's got great breakaway speed. 4-4-8, four, 40-yard four, dash time. I'm just in awe of this formation that they continue to run because they've got five wide receivers out there, and they've got both top and bottom outside the numbers. Rarely do you see that. Look at the horizontal stretch within the defense, especially to the wide side of the field. Just caverns of space out there to try to have to cover. Trying to make a tackle in space. That's a tough thing in college football today. Goodly. And is surrounded by a cowboy. They corralled him at the 32. And there's no secret why they ran the ball that direction. All that space, there's usually one or two defenders out there with lots of responsibility, both in the pass game and the run game. An easy handoff, and it's an easy six yards. Tremendous game plan and formation game plan from Baylor right now. These wide sets stretching horizontally, causing a lot of problems for Oklahoma State. Offensive coordinator Philip Montgomery continues to switch up his... Uh, his skilled players, he's struck in the backfield, but the pitch goes to Norwood, and he's bumped out hard at the 20, cut the 19-yard line by Kevin Peterson on the corner. Disciplined football, and again, this drive at the two-yard line has worked its way to the 18 of Oklahoma State. See strong, big hole, 10-yard line, bangs his way to the eight. I'm seeing Shamil Gary and Daytuan Lowe in on way too many tackles. They're the safeties for Oklahoma State, number eight and number seven. Each had 60 tackles coming into this game, and you see why. This front seven has got to do a better job staying in their gaps and trying to stop this run game themselves. Well, the angry runner, Glasgow Martin, checks in. Keeper, Florence, Cowboys stay at home, Tyler Johnson. With a shoestring tackle. Nick Florence with the you know, you Already a couple of nice plays from him. You, know, you mentioned Florence. Now, he is a runner. He's yeah. had nearly uh, 500 yards on the ground this year. He's ran eight times into the end zone. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's necessarily because he's all that athletic as much as it is. They put so much pressure on the defense with their formations that they create that space and then allow the quarterback to take advantage. Quick hitter, Martin, throws his pads down to the five, maybe the six-yard line. The stop for Oklahoma State. That's a first down, Baylor. Under a minute to play in the quarter. Back on the ground. Inside the two. Martin again. And he ran off a hit. Tyler Johnson hit him. But as you say, Martin runs angry. He just peels off a hit. Now second down and goal. Close. Touchdown, Martin.
For the 12th time this season, Glasgow Martin finds the end zone. A 98-yard drive in today's Buick Human Highlight. 98-yard drive. That was as efficient of a 98-yard drive. They were not stressed much at all on that drive. Clean in the passing game from Nick Florence. Good protection from the offensive line. And Glasgow Martin and the offensive line getting it done inside the red zone. Baylor, big lead early, 17 to three. Here's that hole opened up by the offensive line. Just a slide back to the backside as the backside lineman, Spencer Drango, washes everybody down. Glasgow Martin with a good vision to find that hole and finds himself in the end zone. Darius, I'm impressed with the difference of running abilities that these two guys bring. Seastrunk, Salubi, Martin, they all have different styles. And that's sort of the great thing for Baylor at this point is that it's really keeping Oklahoma State off balance defensively, switching out the two different running backs. You know, Seastrunk is more of a slasher guy who cuts and gets to the outside, and then Martin's the tough, angry running bruiser. So when you're a defender, you don't really know what, how, how to play because it depends on which guy's in. I love what they do inside the five. You know, know who you are, know who you have, who your personnel is, and Martin gets the ball inside the five, and it, it's easy to punch it in at that point. I, the more I see Baylor, you know, this offensive staff now, Philip Montgomery, Art Riles, offensive line coach, everybody, wide receiver coaches, Craig, they've been together for the most part for about 16 years, going back to their high school yes. coaching days 21 here. years in the Texas high school ranks. And, and you can tell, I mean, that they have an answer for everything. This is a well-oiled machine offensively for the Baylor Bears. Get inside the five-yard line, Gilbert. Breaks a tackle and is knocked down inside the 25. This week, FX rules the 10th spot. Tuesday, you waited, now it's here. Don't miss the epic season finale of Sons of Anarchy. Wednesday, you're invited to American Horror Story. Asylum, no reservations, please. Thursday, FX is all about comedy with its always sunny in Philadelphia. 10 o'clock, followed by an all-new episode of The League. On Friday, stop in the Octagon for the Ultimate Fighter Friday. Catch it all on FX. What a schedule that is. Let's see what Oklahoma State can do. Got to an answer. On the ground, stiff arm is Randall. To around the 26, a pick up a two. That's going to run it down to the end of the first quarter. So after 15 minutes in Waco, Texas, the hometown Baylor Bears up on Oklahoma State, 17-3. Fox College Football is presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Oh, I like that. A rack of ribs. I'll take a half a rack. As we're back in Waco, Texas, we start the second quarter. Chelf throws it far side, drop incomplete. Craig Bullerjack back along with Joel Platt. And right now, Oklahoma State, those are the kind of plays you have to make. Yeah, especially here, especially against this offense facing Baylor. They have to answer on this series right here. It's imperative, especially after giving up that defensive touchdown to Eddie Lackey and then allowing Baylor to go 98 yards. It is imperative that Chill right now answers this crowd. The momentum clearly with Baylor. Oklahoma State offensively got to find some run game, got to get some completions down the field. Third down, seven for the Cowboys. Down a couple of touchdowns. Pressure, throw, incomplete. That pressure again. McAllister has uh, earned a game ball here in the first quarter or the first half of play. And his pressure again forces an early throw by Clint Chelf. And again, just a terrific plan by Phil Bennett. You know, early in the game, they weren't having a whole lot of success getting to the quarterback, but then he dials up a pressure on a third down situation, knowing that they need to get the ball down the field. They get to the quarterback and get off the field because of it, giving their offense the ball back. Quinn Sharp boots that punt down to the 25 yard line. Levi Norwood down to the 25. I think they were saying that he fair caught that ball. There was some confusion about the whistle. We'll get the call here from Greg Burks, the referee. 
Well, next Saturday, the UFC returns to Fox as lightweight champion Benson Henderson puts his title on the line against top contender Nate Diaz, highlighting a full night of epic fights. Coverage of UFC on Fox 5 begins next Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, only on Fox. Taylor goes back to work. Back the oh, he's gone. Oh, look at the speed. Busting loose. Tevin Reese explodes for a touchdown, and Baylor, 75 yards from Florence to Tevin Reese. Here's the space I keep talking about, a safety off the hash. He's isolated, a quick slant, and Tevin Reese is gone. Oklahoma State does not have an answer for this empty set with everybody spread all the way outside the numbers. Way too much space being given up in the middle of the field. Baylor sees that, and they are exploiting that right now. Huge touchdown from Tevin Reese. Nick Florence and Baylor rolling along at home on senior day in Waco. Tevin Reese electrifying 75-yard touchdown, 24-3. Eighth one-play touchdown drive this season. Darius Walker, Baylor can strike and strike in a hurry. Yeah, they just continue to control this game, you know, on both sides of the football, specifically in the line of scrimmage. As cliche as it sounds, the battle of the trenches is really who wins the game. And right now, Baylor is dominating on both sides of the line of scrimmage. So the reason this game is going the way it is, is high power offense. You give them some time to put up some points. Boy, this is a loose bunch, is it not, on senior day in Waco? This team been playing well. They got that win over Kansas State which at the time was the number one team in the country right here in Waco. Taking Kansas State out of the national championship game, and ever since, they have been playing great football. Really a tale of almost three different seasons within the season. They started off ranked, and then we actually had them when they went to West Virginia in that barn burner. They lost 70-63. to 63. That caused them to go in a little bit of a tailspin, but that win against Kansas State has brought them right back. And that was a signature win. A little chip, high floater. I saw a hand up, 30-yard line for a fair catch, and now some, a couple extra bumps, a push here, flags, multiple flags are out on the far side. Joel, here's where you have to kind of peel the onion back a little bit. I saw the hand wave for a fair catch, so of course, uh, then you, if you start to run with a football, what's the trigger? You start to impact uh, your opponent, and but, then things get a little, a little, a little testy. But you, you can't hit a guy after he is signaled for fair catch. Kick catch interference, number 39 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. And what people don't know is that you can fair catch right. a kickoff, you know, any kick, where there's going to be a change of possession. You see right here, he puts his hand up. That's a pretty clear fair catch sign. And so right there, the play is dead. You cannot hit that player. That contact is going to draw that foul every single time. And now it gives Oklahoma State real good field position on their most important drive of the game. They're going to get the ball at the 44-yard line, and they must answer Baylor because their defense has not been able to stop the Bears at all. Opening drive, they came up with a... 36-yard field goal off the foot of Quinn Sharp. That's been it. A pick six thrown by Chelf, and the Cowboys go back to work at their own 44. Quick throw near side. Josh Stewart takes a pop and dropped at the 47-yard line. Ahmad Dixon with the pop there, athletic guy on the outside. I'm starting to wonder if Oklahoma State is still in a bit of a hangover mode from losing that Bedlam game last week in the fashion that they did late. Overtime loss to Oklahoma, 51-48. And a game that they dominated. I mean, they should have won that ball game. I think even Oklahoma would tell you that. Had an early lead. Oklahoma comes back. They had to score late inside of a minute in the fourth quarter to force overtime. And then, of course, the missed tackles 
causing the Cowboys to lose that game within the overtime period. Stewart goes in motion, free wide, top of your screen, quick throw, far side. Stewart, the catch, hits the edge, and flies out of bounds near the first down marker at the 32. Mike Hicks with the stop. Blake Jackson, number 18, had a great block for Josh Stewart on the outside. Watch him move his feet right here as you think you'd maybe get a holding call, but he opened up that lane. He stayed with it all the way until the end. He gets back into the screen. That's great effort from a wide receiver. Shelf, three-step drop, pressure, throws up top to the 22-yard line. Josh Stewart, I didn't see a Baylor there within seven yards of him. Real nice route concept. They had a couple of guys, Craig, running off the secondary, and then Stewart, all he did was fall out of his route towards the sideline. Shelf found him. Easy completion for the first down. Nice drive put together by the Cowboys, trying to answer back down 24-3. Handoff. Randall and a push, but I think his forward progress, they'll mark him at the 18-yard line. Out front was Seaton, the fullback, with a block. Mike Gundy told us that they'd like to run a faster pace offense, but they just don't quite have the receiving core, the experience in the receiving core, in order to do that. You know, so much of this offense is wide receiver adjustments on the outside, and if you're playing very fast, it's tough to understand what the defense is doing, so that's why they've had to slow things down this season. Shelf play action over the top in coverage, and that ball's incomplete. Charlie Moore, the intended receiver, tough throw. A couple of Baylor Bears hanging on the back of Moore. Boy, I thought this was a beautiful ball by Clint Shelf. Watch as Charlie Moore gets to the tail end of his route. That ball goes right up almost to the top of his head, just unable to bring it down, maybe a foot lower, and that's a completion for Charlie Moore in the back of the end zone. Third down and six inside the 20-yard line. On the ground, room on the edge, tripped up at the 15-yard line is Randall. Sam Hall, nice tackle. And now no. it's going to be fourth down, call it three. 2011, last season, he's an all-Big 12 player, hard-hitting veteran, preseason all-Big 12, and he comes up with a huge stop there on third down. Open field tackling, so important versus these spread offenses. We saw a great example from Sam Hall right there. They jumped in J.W. Walsh. They like to run him in a package inside the red zone. So Walsh is in, opens the field, inside the five goes Randall. Sometimes it can be used as a decoy. Walsh did a nice job of accelerating out of that after he gave the ball, and he occupied some of the defenders. Randall found some open space. Walsh wants the edge, finds it, cuts in, hit hard at the touchdown, right at the goal line. He took a shot, falls in. And Oklahoma State answers when they had to. Huge drive for Oklahoma State. And J.W. Walsh putting his shoulder down at the goal line. That was quite a collision right there. Eddie Lackey came over from his linebacker spot. He's the one that laid that heavy hit on J.W. Walsh. But Oklahoma State gets the most important touchdown of the day so far for them. Boy, that was quite a collision. This play, though, will be reviewed. It's gone upstairs to our replay official, David Ames. We'd like to remind you the details. Did the ball Blake break the plane? I think the fact that the knee didn't go down, watch as J.W. Walsh, he starts to spin. Here's contact, and now he spins his back towards the end zone to bring that ball, which is in his right hand, towards the goal line. I think that this is going to be upheld because of that. Watch him spin, knee up, knee up, knee up, and he spins back. There's not going to be enough to overturn the touchdown call. This is going to stand. What a physical run. I mean, he's only 205 pounds. He's running like he's 230. If this play stands, it would be his sixth rushing touchdown. This is from up top. What a collision. Darius, you're down there. Look to us pretty clear. 
Yeah, guys, it's, it's pretty clear here. This this looks like this is going to stand. Uh, when he rolled over in that and scored the touchdown, it's, it's just not enough to overturn. It's not enough indisputable evidence to overturn it. But I can tell you, it definitely has created a spark for Oklahoma State on the sideline perspective because their players right now are going crazy. J.W. Walsh came off, and they were treating it like he was the best man at a wedding or something. They were giving him a lot of high fives. Here's the call. After review, the runner's elbow hit the ground. The ball is short of the goal line. Wow. It'll be second down. And let's take another look at this. That shocks me. Focus on the elbow. So his left elbow, they're saying, was down at the half yard line. Tough to see the goal line in that, that look. I'm frankly shocked that they overturned that. That's not indisputable video evidence in my book. Walsh stays on the field in this run package in the red zone. High snap. He'll tuck and run. No question this time as he keeps his feet and gives Walsh the touchdown. I love what they did there. Hey, you scored it the first time. Get, go back and get that one on your stat sheet. <laughs> You know, you made a point. Walsh runs bigger than 205. He runs way bigger than 205. They bring him in as that Wildcat guy. Normally, those are guys like Blake Bell, who's 240 pounds at the University of Oklahoma. Not a guy 205. Quinn Sharp will try the PAT. He's 61 of 61 on the year. The point is up and good. So the Cowboys score their first touchdown, and they trim the lead here in Waco. 24-10. Baylor on top of the Cowboys. Fox College Football is sponsored by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Ten plays, 56 yards. Cowboys answer. J.W. Walsh with a one-yard run. Key play was that conversion on fourth down. Wind continues to blow, and so a little help on the tee for Quinn Sharp. Kicks away. <laughs> no chance. What a leg. Joel, let's check out the decent Heisman watch. Well, for me, it's it's a three-man race right now. Maybe you could put Braxton Miller and Marquise Lee in there, but Manti Teo, Johnny Manziel, and Colin Klein, these three guys have separated themselves in college football. And if you're asking me, I know this is going to make Darius Walker very happy. I'm going with the defensive player, Manti Teo. Love it. Well, you know, you got to look at one of the things as a voter is indisputable evidence. <laughs> and you got to have to have more than an elbow down to, to say that Manti Teo is not going to win. I love it. There's no doubt. Seven interceptions. Darius is the emotional leader of the number one team in the country. I think he's got to take on that trophy. Baylor up the middle. And stacked up after a two-yard game. I want to get back to the Heisman Trophy talk for just a minute because basically here's the rules and regulations in my book. It's the best college football player in the country. Doesn't mean that he'll become the best NFL player on Sunday. What's he do for your football team? So that being said, you, you got to say? Matt Hightail. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how you can win or lose that Heisman in one game. Darius is bleeding green right now, and it's not Baylor green on the sideline. Little fighting Irish. You know, Geno Smith had it in week five, Colin Klein week 11. But again, it's that one or two games that can make it shift it up or down. Florence throws far side. It's on the money at the 37-yard line. And a first down for Baylor. Lanier Sampson with that catch is 49th of the year. You, you bring up a good point about late momentum for the Heisman. Oh, absolutely. Colin Klein's the only guy going to be playing on that list. It's a good point. This weekend. You know, Manti is done. Johnny Manziel is done. And Colin Klein's got that big game, a, a pseudo league championship yep. opportunity for them against Texas at home. So he's got a, a real chance. If he goes out there and really blows the doors off the Longhorns today, I think Colin Klein could put himself maybe back in that driver's seat. 
goalkeeper. Oh, took a high one right up top of the numbers. Is that a flag? Yeah, late one. You know, like this is going to be interesting on the slide. Kind of hard to pull up as a defender wherever that hat hits. It just seemed like a late, awkward slide. I don't know if you can expect the defender. Maybe they'll say he was leading with his head, but he goes in. See how he goes to the side, and he actually goes with his shoulder, and he's not even trying to target Nick Florence high. Interesting discussion here, but the flag clearly out. There is no foul. Is no foul. The contact is with the shoulder. All right, see, I, the officials. That's a great yes, decision. They huddle, they discuss it. That's job. a right call. You're right. That is an excellent job by this crew. Because I thought it was a late slide, and then he tries to pull up, and he goes with the shoulder, and he goes low. Uh, that's exactly what they're trying to do with defensive football right now. That's a terrific job by this officiating team. 49-yard line goes Florence on the play action. They toss it out far side, and it's on the hands of Reese. And remember, Reese had that explosive 75-yard touchdown to make a 24-3 on their last possession. Baylor inside Cowboy territory again at the 38. A little option. Seastrom tries to hit the edge. Does. Oh, delivers punishment to the 21-yard line. Daquan Lowe finally brought him down. Joel Platt, if you like to run the football, you like the ground game, you have to like that effort. They're saying that he fumbled this ball late. My goodness. I believe that they're saying Oklahoma State is going to get this ball. Here's the juke move that he puts on Shamil Gary. He gets up the field. Let's watch late in this, this play. He's fighting for extra yardage. They are saying that he lost control of the football. Here's another look. Running over low. And that's going to be oh, very difficult. Another I, tough replay for David Ames. Yeah, you have to review this. I didn't quite, I didn't see the ball no. coming loose, Craig, before he hit the he ground. He hit the ground, the knee came, was down, and then the ball came a loose, but I thought the whistle had sounded. Here it is again. I feel like at this point, he hits low. Control. That ball is still under control, and right here, that ball is still under, maybe it's coming loose from the elbow. That's Caleb Levy. This will be a great look. Is the ball, watch it as, as the corner of the ball in the elbow. If, I think it might be coming out. That's a great look right there. Knees on top of the defensive player. Ball coming out maybe before he hits the ground. That was a terrific look by our camera crew. I think this one's going to be actually, well, you know what? I might just stay away from giving my <laughs> prediction of what I think is going to happen. But I will say this. Craig, I think you agree. From this angle, Looks like the ball is coming loose right when the defensive player right here. It's after Levy comes 40, in. Yeah, Levy comes in right there. See how it's coming loose? Still up. That's all I'll say. I'm not going to commit <laughs> past that right now. A long review by the official David Ames. Ruling on the field is fumble recovered by Oklahoma State needs to be indisputable video evidence that that ball Was not coming loose. Here's gonna be another good look. Yeah, that's coming loose Great angles that's, by our that, camera. That's crew. the best angle His knees were still up After further review the ruling on the field stands first down Oklahoma State Oh, this crowd explodes, but I, it's the right call on that last replay that we saw, the ball is out and the knees are still up off the turf. And so a great run by Seastrunk, though. He loses control in Oklahoma State with the football at the 22. Just at the last second, Caleb Levy, the hustle down the field. They say he's the ringleader of this defense. Acad academic All-Big 12 first team. Comes through with a huge play, and they equal out that turnover that Baylor got early in this game. 9.26 to play in the half. Cowboys run it straight ahead with Randall. Nice run on first down. They'll mark him at the 31-yard line. I know, Joel, you like a play like this where you pick up the 8 or the 9 yards. This is a free one, the second yeah. down and short. Especially with the wind. Wind at Oklahoma State's back. This is a perfect time 
to get a big play action fake into Randall's belly and try to let Shelf go down the field. On the ground, watch out, Randall. 45 yard line, he broke it at the line of scrimmage and exploded past Holland Hicks, who finally brought him down at the 44 yard line, a pickup of 26 yards. Watch this move he puts on Lackey. Wow! You talk about some jukes. Shelf now goes to work and overthrows on the far side. It was Isaiah Anderson, number 82, the intended receiver. Let's go back to that run quickly. Eddie Lackey was in the hole. He was in perfect position. This is when Randall just throws the jukes on him and gets off field. Randall back to back thousand yard seasons. Last year, 1600. This year, over 12. Three wide receivers set top of your screen on second down and 10. Underneath, Austin Hayes, the freshman. Oh, he takes a pile of bears with him to the 31-yard line. We talk about the receiving core of Oklahoma State. They lost a couple of players early. They've had to play some freshmen. One is Hayes, the other is Blake Webb. And off Smith, out of bounds at the 19. How about this mix of run and pass for Oklahoma State? And you start getting that rhythm, you know, you get a couple of first downs and you start rolling this fa fast tempo in, the defense gets tired, they get more vanilla in their basic defensive looks, it becomes very easy to move the ball. Smith again gets a carry right up the middle, spins out of a tackle to the 15. I think this is where I see the biggest difference between these two teams offensively. In the red zone, Oklahoma State doesn't have the Terrence Williams type character to throw the ball to on the outside. It's tougher. They've got to run the football more. Joseph Randall back in the game in the backfield with Clint Shelf. Had a two play break, fresh legs. Right alongside Shelf on second down. On her line up behind Shelf. Gets the ball. Stuck. They'll lose maybe a yard back to the 16. Lackey makes the initial hit. What a game he's had. He's been in the backfield a lot this season, Joel. Seven tackles for losses. Here's that second level. You've got Eddie Lackey, Chris McAllister. Stacking up that run game, forcing a huge third down opportunity now. Clint Chelf. He's got his favorite wide receiver, Josh Stewart, in the slot, low part of your screen. From the gun. Chelf, three-step drop, looks to the end zone, fires a top, and a touchdown for the Cowboys. Josh Stewart brings it down, his seventh touchdown catch of the year. What a drive from Oklahoma State. Now that's an answer, taking the turnover and going right down the field and sticking it in the end zone. Quinn Sharp will try the PAT. Low snap, chip shot up and good. Cowboys at one point led or were trailed by 24-3. It's now 24-17 as Chelf goes up top, right on the money. 24-17, Baylor. Twenty-four, seventeen, fourteen 14 unanswered by Oklahoma State. He plays 77 yards. Stewart on a 15-yard touchdown catch from Chelf, and it was set up by that Seastrunk uh, fumble. Dr. Trilling, 24-3. Oklahoma State making a game of it here on the road against Baylor. The kick, no return, out of the end zone. Tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday begins with the Vikings heading to Green Bay to take on the Packers in a key NFC North showdown. Or you'll see the Niners, Rams, Cardinals, Jets, Seahawks, Bears, or...
the Panthers and Chiefs, or maybe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on Peyton Manning and the Broncos in the Mile High City. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, here on Fox. That one could be interesting. Six and five, Tampa Bay, Denver, rolling along, eight and three at this point. How about Peyton Manning? Had that early season success. He's then he the MVP, right? Then, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's going to be hard to take it away from him. Then he had that dip, and then all of a sudden, the rhythm returns. It's been amazing to watch that guy work. One of the best to ever lace him up. Keeper. Florence. Out in open space, and Robinson pulled him down from the collar. A flag sound. That's what's going to draw the flags at the end of the run. More space created formationally. And Personal here's Nick foul. Florence. Horse call. Number seven in the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. There's Ryan Robinson bringing him down. He holds him up for the teammates. Great call by the officials there. Great look at it. Nick Florence doing some damage on the ground. Eight rushing touchdowns when the day started, 460 yards. Usually you look at quarterbacks' rush numbers, and because of sacks, it's in the uh, negative numbers, but not for Nick Florence. Florence won the throw, now he tucks and runs, heads to the sideline, sidesteps a tackler, and will slip down to the 31-yard line. I love what he's been able to do, eyes down the field, watch his eyes, down the field, down the field, trying to get it, number two, three wide receiver, now I'm gone. I see green grass, he runs, moves the chains. That's a senior running the offense. Managing the offense, I know people and quarterbacks don't like that said, but that's what he's doing. And a first and 10, Seastrunk, the ball carrier, past the 25. He'll take it to the 23-yard line. Lindell Johnson with the tackle, number 27, got an injured cowboy, that's Johnson. Sophomore out of Plano, Texas. Athletic guy, too. Speedy player, six and a half tackles for loss. Fox College football is sponsored by Applebee's. See you tomorrow. By UPS, let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. And buy the Spark Business Card from Capital One. Get more with double miles or 2% cash back. Well, the good news is Lindell Johnson was able to walk off the field. How? I don't know. There's the replay. He's the one coming over the top. That did not look good. Tried to hobble himself off the field, but he did, during the break, under his own power, walk off the field over the table for evaluation. Lasco Martin checks into Baylor backfield on second down. Florence, the gun, the handoff. Up the middle and the push. What an impressive push by Glasgow Martin. I mean, Joe, he stopped seriously at the 22-yard line, and they finally take him down at the 18. Forward lean is so important. Patience, you know, all those things that are tangibles for, intangibles for running backs, that's what Martin has. Try to keep his feet. No game. Second down. Oklahoma State got to be thinking to themselves, force a kick. Even giving up a field goal at this point has got to be a successful defensive series. You got to think that your offense, if your Oklahoma State is going to continue to score points, so just forcing a kick from Nick Florence is what you want to do. Baylor stretches the field with five wide receivers. Florence checks the sidelines on second down. Over the middle, caught at the five, Terrence Williams. Look at the space in the middle of the field created by the formation. That's what they're able to create right there. And Terrence Williams exploits that on the slant route. They pull those linebackers apart formationally, give a quick play action fake, draw them up to the line of scrimmage, and then hit them deep. First and goal, they punch it to the three yard line. 
And they're going to get a heavy dose right now of Glasgow Martin. It was successful once already. Why not stick with it? Such a heavy runner, runs angry. Glasgow Martin inside the five, always a good option. Score from two yards out at the end of the first quarter to make it 17-3, and the Baylor Bears knocking on the door again. Fox under four minutes here in the first half. Touchdown, Baylor. All about the play fake. Not just the play fake, but the time committed to him. Watch him ride all the way for about a yard and a half. Gets the defense to commit and then pulls that ball and gets it into the end zone. That's excellent execution from Nick Florence. Aaron Jones in to try the point after. That's the ninth rushing touchdown for Nick Florence. And a chip shot good. And Baylor, after watching Oklahoma State score two straight touchdowns, take it in. Florence rumbles, and it's a 31-17 Baylor lead in Waco. Find some peace this holiday. Get an eight-piece meal now with a dozen delicious cookies baked in store. The KFC Festive Feast, all for just $19.99. Do it. Yes, you did. No, I did it. No, I did. Yes, you did. No, I did. did not. Yes, you did. Today tastes so good. Well, stick around. Coming up on the Pizza Hut Halftime Report, Big 12 Bowl Breakdown who will run for the Roses and a look ahead to the second half here in Waco, Texas. On senior day, cloudy this morning. Turned out to be a nice afternoon. Wind still whipping right to left. Got to expect that Oklahoma State's going to get the ability to return this ball. Eight plays, 75 yards. Florence on that drive, 32 rush yards, and takes it in the final three for the touchdown. Ball comes out. Gilbert had it. That ball kind of died on him because of the wind. And let's get an update. Injury update. Lindell Johnson. Darius, what's the latest? Well, the latest is, is that, uh, you know, I'm going to say that I wish I had his knees because, yes, it looked awful from the sideline view as well. But the trainer staff tells me that he's going to go back in the game. It's a little sore, but he's got some serious flexibility in his knees. <laughs> oh. Got the brace on. He's suiting up. That's crazy after what we saw. Randall and Smith will be in the backfield alongside Shelf here with 3.30 to play for Oklahoma State. They toss it in round. Here comes Josh Stewart with blockers. 40, 45, 50. And out of bounds goes Stewart at the Baylor 49-yard line. How about your quarterback out throwing a block? He's trying to. <laughs> I don't suggest it. I used to act like I was just behind the play, you know, like, I'll, I'll catch up, I'll catch up, guys, Clint Ch Chelf getting out there in front of the play. Another quick first down for Oklahoma State, really winning the battle on first down offensively. 25-yard gain inside Baylor territory. Chelf all day to throw that ball. Through the hands, Hicks has it for Baylor, and he'll take it to the 44-yard line. Joel, I think we'll see that ball was a little high on the release through the hands and the interception. If you don't get on top of the ball as a quarterback throwing with a wind like this, the ball can rise. And that's exactly what happens to Josh Stewart. Josh Stewart tries to climb the ladder to get it through his hands. And Baylor opportunistic with Mike Hicks, his second interception on the year. Bears go back to work as Florence throws near side inside the 35. Oh, a late throw. Crowd's barking for a flag. Justin Gilbert.
playing a little angry. Well, you be the call here. Out of bounds. Did he throw him down after the whistle? They're a little emotional, Justin Gilbert now. Lawrence, the keeper, to the 33 yard line. And the host uh, Cowboys on the tackle. Darius, Oklahoma State got to hold on to the ball better. They're turning the ball over too much today. Yeah, and the key number here for Baylor was two. During this season, they are 14 and two when they force two or more turnovers. So one more turnover, and they're in good shape, so to speak. You had the lackey pick six in the first quarter that made it 10 3, and now another interception for Baylor. The Bears are trying to cash in. Quick throw near side on the hands of Williams out of bounds at the 28. Leads the nation in receiving yards. Terrence Williams over 1,700 now. He's the package. 6'2, 205, great speed, hands. Clock rolls up on two minutes to play in the first half. Quick throw again near side. Bounds. Pretty simple stuff, Joel. Tevin Reese the catch. Oklahoma State right now is now trying to get into the chess game. They're trying to disguise their coverage. They're trying to run out, look like man, run out into cover two. But our Bryles in this system, they've got an they've got an answer for everything. Seesaw runs out of a tackle. Ryan Robinson though, second effort stayed with it. Mark him short of that. It's going to be a fourth down. Here comes Glasgow Martin, the big guy, 6'1, 220, junior from Round Rock, Texas, in the backfield. Expect some sort of option with him and Nick Florence. He's on the left side of Nick Florence. Baylor 19 of 25 on fourth down conversions this season. Snap goes to the quarterback. Going to be close on the spot. Martin tried, in fact, he left his feet and tried to dive up and over. Looks like he got it by that spot. If he got to the 22-yard line, it looks like it was going to be a first down, and there it is. First down for Bailey. Stop the Baylor drive at the two yard line. Justin Gilbert read this beautifully. Miscommunication from Terrence Williams and Nick Florence. You see, Williams wants to go back to the corner of the end zone. Nick Florence threw that ball like he was cutting on the post. Gilbert doesn't buy the fake, and he comes in and just doesn't hold on. That would have been a huge stop for Oklahoma State. Second down. Tucks and runs, stacked up, dropped to the 19. Just around the corner, we'll have the Pizza Hut halftime report. We'll break down the Big 12 bowl scenario. Who's going to run for the Roses? And a look at half of the second half here in Baylor. 21 seniors playing their final game at home for the Bears. Glasgow Martin just arrives in the backfield on third down and seven. This is a huge third down for Oklahoma State. They have got to stop Baylor and force them to kick this field goal now inside of 30 seconds in the first half. Florence throws near side and up high for the catch. We're going to mark him at the 11 yard line. Make it the 10. Cowboys want a timeout. Well, this college football season, Fox Sports has been proud to partner with the Prostate Cancer Foundation, the world's largest supporter of prostate cancer research. One in six American men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. To learn more, make sure you visit pcf.org slash Fox Sports.
Two teams huddle, 15 seconds on the clock, and a 31-17 lead for Baylor. So Joel, the strategy's been decided. You made the point, three sounds better than seven if you're Oklahoma State. Well, and this is where you just got to understand situations as a quarterback. If you're Nick Florence, you've got two timeouts, so the entire field is at your disposal. And offensively, you need to allow your linemen, you, you got to tell them, we can still get a first down, so make sure we're able to get up there if we get inside the two so we can go and clock this ball dead. Everybody on the field has got to understand what's going on. Too wide, top of your screen, too wide at the bottom. Florence throws, middle of the field. There was contact, no flag, and it's incomplete. Second down. He wanted Terrence Williams. That stops the clock with 12 seconds to play in the half. It's a, a fast three seconds there. Excuse me, I should say slow three yes. seconds there. Full play action, trying to get the ball across the middle of the field. Only three seconds. 11th play of this drive for Baylor. Now we got a flag out. False start. Number 78 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Ivory Wade, the center. 12 seconds away from the Pizza Hut halftime report. The question mark of the day, who's going to get the Rose Bowl bid? Wisconsin's been to a couple in a row, trying to make it three straight. They've lost a couple in a row to TCU and Oregon in Pasadena. Again, Florence goes to work, play action corner, and it's incomplete. Williams has been his target on this drive, incomplete. That brings up third down. Well, Justin Gilbert is following Terrence Williams around. Everywhere telling Terrence Williams go, Justin Gilbert is the corner that covers him. And he's gotten beat a couple of times, but he's also played very hard. I mean, he's been in great position on a few of these plays. He almost had the interception on that time using the out of bounds, the end zone as his friend, as the second defender, forcing Williams towards the sidelines, using that space to get him out of bounds. Florence pressured out of the pocket. Takes a lick, throws it up top and out of bounds. Tyler Johnson came strong, and Florence got rid of that ball, but he paid for it. Scrambling around, very risky move. Here's the clock. Let's see when the ball actually hits the ground. Is there a second left? And yes. But risky move. I mean, that clock could have run out on him, running around back there trying to make a play. But you, you, as a quarterback, you got to understand, your team still has a field goal opportunity. You can't take that away from you. You don't want to take a sack. You don't want to turn the ball over. You don't want to let the clock run out, so a risky move by Nick Florence, but one second left for Baylor and Aaron Jones to come out. Now this will be into the win. This ball placed at the 24. This will be a 34-yard attempt. He hit from 39 in the opening quarter to tie the game at three. So this kick would make it a 34-17 lead. I think Mike Gundy may be arguing that the clock ran out. Because he's pointing at the clock right now. And he's saying, I don't think that that ball hit the ground with time left on the clock. Now, we've shown it to you. We know that there is one second, so this will be right. Baylor's going to get this field goal opportunity, but Mike Gundy just wanted to clarify. There's the game clock. Right lower part of your screen, and it's when the ball hits the ground, there's a second left, and it's still good. So the challenge is on, and David Ames will take a look upstairs.
The ball released with three seconds, two. It clicks to one. And Joel, that, that is a long second. I know that's in slow motion. <laughs> the slow motion second is all the Oklahoma State fans out there are like, that's the longest second in the world. I thought it clicked from three to two pretty, Let, I'll tell pretty you what, fast. Let's, let's show this real speed, and this will give you an idea of how quickly all of this happens. Five seconds left when Florence cuts back, gets into the middle of the field, lets it go. There was clearly one second left, and an eager clock operator here in Waco, <laughs> Texas, ready on the button right there to make sure that there was still that, that one second. Looks as though the one second call will stand and the field goal attempts will come for Baylor. Well, if you're Mike Gundy, why not? You, you know, I mean, this is this is a critical point here. Here's Greg Burks. Because the clock did not run out, it is not a reviewable situation. Fourth down. So they went to the review, but it is not a reviewable situation. So the field goal opportunity now from 34. as the clock now officially runs dry. And that's a huge stand for Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy's got to be thrilled. He's not showing it right now because he's down 31-17, but that is an enormous stop for that Cowboy defense and creates a lot of momentum for them going into their locker room. Tangible momentum for them. Had a couple of turnovers, but a huge defensive stand here late in this first half. Watch the push. Alex Elkins, I think, is the one that gets up and he He's the one highest up there, but that's a huge stop for Mike Gundy and the Cowboys. Downstairs we go, Darius Walker with head coach of Baylor, Art Bryles, guys. Coach, you've talked about momentum all week and that your team is playing the best football that they've been playing all season. How much has that momentum helped here in the first half today? It's helped, our crowd has helped. You know, we had the big turnover early and then we gave them one back there at the end and then, you know, didn't get points at the end here after the other one, but you know, our guys are playing hard. We'll come out and continue to play with this effort. We'll have a good chance to win this game. You know, talk about the turnovers. You already got two in this game. You had a bunch last week as well. How does your defense continue to get turnovers? Uh, we're just, you know, we're playing well as a team right now. There's both sides of the ball and special teams. We've got to just keep rising up and keep making things happen for us. Second half adjustments. What are you thinking? Uh, Oklahoma State's been able to keep you off balance on the defensive side of the ball. You've been having some success. What are you thinking to tell the team at halftime? I mean, we're good. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. You know, they got a good football team. You know, that's why they're where they're at. And we do too. So it, it'll come down to who makes plays second half. Well, Coach, we certainly appreciate it. Good luck second half. Thank you, dude. Baylor 4 0 this season when they lead at the half here in Waco. Coming up is the Pizza Hut halftime report. Just moments away, start of the third quarter here in Waco, Texas on Senior Day, and Baylor on top of Oklahoma State, 31-17. Craig Bullerjack along with Joel Klatt. Let's get right to it. Turnovers, really a big story in half number one. Two interceptions that Oklahoma State threw in this ball game, and in the six previous meetings between these two teams, they had not thrown one interception. Very lopsided towards Oklahoma State in those six games, but early in this game, Eddie Lackey picked six off Clint 
Shell. This is the one I thought caught away from Shelf a little bit. Hicks gets the tip ball. That was the second turnover of the day for Oklahoma State. Didn't end up hurting them because Baylor wasn't able to put up points at the end of the half. But as you can see, our Geico stat comparison for the first half. Rush yards just about even, right where we thought they would be. Both these teams love to run it. Baylor, 226 yards passing, 379 total, and 23 first downs. Oklahoma State has got to lock things down defensively here in this second half. Time of possession, 14-32 to 15-28. Baylor will have the football to start the third quarter, and they have the lead of 31-17. Nick Florence played really well in the first half. Unable to get those points. I know they're frustrated about that, but they've got to be very, very happy with the way their offense has played. 379 already on the day. From the 35, kicks away with the wind. Goal line. Jones breaks it. 35 40. Watch out. 50, Darius Jones to the 28-yard line. An explosive return and with a big lead of 31-17, one away to start the third quarter. I love the decisiveness of this return. I think that's one of the best attributes that any returner can have. 73 yards, and it's because right when he sees the hole, he's gone. There's not a lot of shifting and running east and west. He is down north and south, finds the hole, cuts back at the end. But a 73-yard return for an offense that frankly doesn't need it with the way that they were playing in the first half. What a tremendous way to start this second half for Baylor. Nick Florence hands that ball off to Glasgow Martin, who pushes his way to the 23-yard line. And Darius, you uh, had a chance to talk to head coach of Oklahoma, Mike Gundy. Yeah, I caught up with Mike Gundy and I asked him what he thought about halftime going in with that play and why he decided to challenge it. He said that he saw the clock hit zero before the ball hit the ground. He believes that that's a play that should be challenged. He also talked about eliminating the big plays for Baylor. Didn't, didn't do a good start coming in from halftime. Now the big return of 73 yards. Oklahoma State's uh, head coach not happy with the score and the performance at this point, 31-17. Hard to put your defense in that short field, Joel, to start a, a second half. Especially a defense that was just in this situation right at the end of the first half. They held Baylor to no points on that series, and now backs against the wall again. Again, Baylor stretches the field, five wide receivers. Florence calls up, incomplete. We've had a lot of tip balls today through the hands of receivers. Of course, Baylor's defense has uh, taken advantage of that on their end. Just out of the reach of the defensive back for Oklahoma State, but I, I still wonder. It's not that I think Oklahoma State has been sleepwalking through this game by any means. They've played hard, but I just get the sense that the hangover is still there, there from the loss last week to Oklahoma. Now their defense in consecutive series has forced Baylor to a field goal opportunity. 41 yards, Aaron Jones. No good. And for the second straight drive, they don't give up any points. Now that's a huge lift for Oklahoma State. 73 yard kickoff return, and they gave up no points after giving up 379 yards of offense so far in this game. That is a tremendous lift for Mike Gundy and this Cowboy offense, no doubt about it. Go we take a look around the Big 12, how this thing started at the beginning of the season. The three season polls like Stoops and Oklahoma, followed by Geno Smith, West Virginia, Texas, Oklahoma State number four. And then things kind of crashed a little bit. Then they played the game, right? And Kansas State took over the top with Colin Klein and company. Of course, the signature win for Baylor was the win against Kansas State. Yeah, Kansas State, boy, what Bill Snyder has been able to do, just so impressive. And really what Bob Stoops continues to do at Oklahoma, think about those two losses. A, a loss to Kansas State in the top ten of the country, they've only got one loss. And a loss to number one Notre Dame undefeated on their way to the BCS National Championship game. Second down eight, Chelf 
stands in the pocket, wide open. Josh Stewart, one step away from a touchdown. On the shoestring, Mike Hicks saved that touchdown. He good. was one step away from breaking it. Play a good, accurate throw from Chell. Stewart is the man on the inside, the slot receiver in the trips formation. He does a nice job forcing the outside release. He gets on top of the second level defender and then gives his numbers to the quarterback. Terrific crowd. Game of 22. Chell flips it off of the flat. Big yards past the 30-yard line. Ty Staley, his 12th catch of the season, the big fullback on occasion. They'll go to him, and it's a 23-yard gain to the 29. Now the handoff to Randall. Hits the edge. He can't turn the corner. Pulled down by Lackey. Lackey is such a strong player. You can tell his lower half is so strong. They tell us that he can hang clean, not a power clean from the floor, but you pick the bar up, hold it at your thighs, and then clean it up to your chest. They tell us he can hang clean 395 pounds. Explosive player. That was my old Volkswagen. <laughs> Good tires. They want to throw it. Stewart. Oh, drop. In the end zone, Blake Johnson. Blake Jackson, so athletic, set up right from the start. They've got two guys out on the route. Stewart goes back to his secondary receiver, who's Jackson on the backside post. Falls on the money. Jackson's got to make that catch, and Stewart knows it. Jackson out of Gilbert, Arizona, have to make that grab. 25 receptions on the year, a couple of touchdowns. Well, versus Baylor, you can't let those opportunities get away from you because you know Baylor's going to score a point. I like the play call. Smith inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Mike Hicks, we called his number, name quite a few times today, number 17. And you knew that that play call was going to frustrate Mike Gundy. They got the look to run it. They decided to run it and take the field goal, but running the ball on third and 10 plus yards, that's a frustrating pop proposition for any coach. But when the defense gives you that look, I guess you gotta try it. Officially 43 yards for Quinn Sharp. His longest 51 this season kicks up. And good from 43. The three-time All-American points on the board for Oklahoma State. 31-20, Baylor on Fox. Fox College Football is sponsored by Miller Light. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. By KFC, come in today and taste why fresh is better. And by Victory Motorcycles, ride one and you'll own one. Look at how the quarterbacks have compared today. Pretty comparable. Florence has had a big day. Chelp with just those two interceptions. The first one, the bad one, got taken back for a touch, touchdown by Eddie Lackey and then the tip ball. But Chelp has settled down, it seems like. That last series was a pretty quality series, and they had the opportunity with Blake Jackson in the end zone off the Stewart pass, but they were unable to pull that one in. Goodley and Jones set to receive the kick from Quinn. Goodly to the 30. That's where Baylor will start this drive tomorrow. Start your NFL Sunday with the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. As Peyton Manning, John Elway, and John Fox talk about Denver's season. That should be interesting. Plus, Michael Strahan picks his top five pass rushers that are 25 or younger. It's all on the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox. How about Manning, Elway, and Fox talking about football in Denver? I bet you those three will bring up one of those pass rushers that Howie's going to talk about, Vaughn Miller, who's doing an excellent job. Of course, everybody from these parts down in Texas know what a sensational player Vaughn Miller was from Texas A&M. Baylor starts his drive to the 30-yard line. Quick throw, slant, pick up nine to the 39. Norwood makes the catch. Now AM will 
most likely be represented as the, at that Heisman finalist uh, yes. ceremony in New York with Johnny Manziel. Into the pile and thrown back. Florence wrapped up by Tyler Johnson. This defense trying to use the, that momentum. They're a step faster right now than they were earlier in the game. Earlier in the game, this formation, this wide formation that I keep talking about, top wide receiver and bottom wide receiver outside the numbers. Oklahoma State was having a real hard time with it, but playing much better right now. On the option, nine yards, C strong. Justin Gilbert wraps him up. But again, I thought that play was sold by the way Florence was able to ride C strong into that line. Yeah, his commitment to ball handling and footwork off of that ball handling is pretty tremendous. I really enjoy watching Nick Florence play the quarterback position. He's a steady guy. Tough throw across the field. Good enough for a first down to Lanier Sampson. Here's that ball handling that we're talking about. Really reading the defensive line and the keys, and that's what allows those holes to open up for a guy like Seastrunk, who then takes it for about a six-yard gain, sets up a second and short proposition. 23rd, first down over the middle, incomplete. Terrence Williams wide open, middle of the field, and that stops the clock with 10.08 to play in the third. And Tyler Johnson made this play, and he's been all over the field. Watch Tyler Johnson, number 40. He's going to be at the feet of Nick Florence. He gets through the double team of protection, and that's why Nick Florence didn't have his feet with him. You see how he just threw that ball flat-footed rather than stepping into it. That's because of Tyler Johnson's pressure affecting the throw. A nice job by the defensive end, Junior from Haskell, Oklahoma. Five wide receivers set. They're going to run it, and Florence is thrown down at the 40-yard line. Well, he has been bold running the football today. Watch this fake and how Nick Florence affects the defense. Right there, see how the defensive end, he's going to take it out that way? Just that one move, that's all he needs, and he creates the space needed to get up the field and gain four, five, six yards. That was Lindell Johnson, by the way, who was upended with that, what looked to be a knee injury. He's back with braces and playing in the second half. Quick hitter. Florence flips the wrist to the 30-yard line. Lanier Sampson the catch. And a tackle by the freshman, Kevin Peterson. Sampson now with 42 straight games with the catch. A senior playing his last game here in Waco, Texas. Got a huge round of applause before the game. Been very productive for a long time for the Bears. What a streak that is. 42 consecutive with a pass reception. Five wide. Florence pressured runs near sideline and is pushed out of bounds at the 26. What an asset for a guy like Nick Florence, because it was a good pass rush. Empty set means you only got the five guys in front of you to protect, so you've got to protect yourself. Nick Florence is able to do that, plus he gains five yards and creates a second and five. Ball up, batted once, twice, and it's down, incomplete. Oh, ho. Little pinball. How about Sean Lewis and Caleb Levy? Watch both of them get to Nick Florence and just hard hitting on the quarterback. Ball was bounced around. Oklahoma State had an opportunity, but that's why I love Nick Florence, man. It doesn't matter how hard you hit that guy. He was right back up. Give me the rock. Third down. Let's go. Trips to the far side. They run it outside. Watch out. Ten. Five. And Seastrunk out of bounds at the four-yard line. And this is what the commitment to ball handling does for you. Watch this. Nick Florence, we saw the play that he ran with. That's the exact same look. The defense comes in. He gives the ball to Seastrunk. That's what creates the space. Nick Florence's commitment to the run game is as good as anybody in the country from the quarterback position. That ball handling is absolutely superb. 21-yard pickup, 136 last week for Seastrunk against Texas Tech. Levy with the tackle, the middle linebacker. This time on, Glasgow Martin will check in. Guess who? Number eight. He's the down and dirty guy. 580 pounds. This guy can squat in the weight room. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Second. 
and goal. Flintstone weights. They just bend over his back. <laughs> This drive, impressive, 12th play, second and goal. That ball popped out, Florence brings it back and he's ridden down. Ryan Robinson jumped on his back, number 96. Darius, what makes such a good running back inside the five yard line? Is it just power or do you still have to be elusive? It's more of a mental thing, guys. It's really that you got to have that tenacity and just be an angry runner like what they call Glasgow Martin because it's really a will here. You know you're going to get hit. You know you're going to get hit hard. You just got to accept that fact. Some running backs accept it a little better than others do. There you see Seastrong who comes back in. He weighs 205. Martin goes out to 220 pounder. Again, this time Florence cannot elude the Cowboys at the six yard line. Nice play, Cooper Bassett build up the middle, number 80. I, I know they've had a lot of success with the run game, and, and we have told you, and I've been very praised, you know, Nick Florence has been pra praise worthy of that ball handling, but you know, to have all those snaps down there inside the 10 and you don't throw the ball and target Terrence Williams, you got to question that when you're running your field goal unit onto the team, onto the field. This will be a 23-yard attempt for Aaron Jones. Good snap, good hole, kicks up. And it's good from 23. Two touchdown game, Baylor 34, Cowboys 20 on Fox. Time for our Kate Jewelers headline. Stanford last night winning the Pac-12 title, Bama, Georgia, play for the SEC title and how about Nebraska Wisconsin they'll play for the Big Ten title that's coming up later tonight right here on Fox great college football this weekend boy UCLA played so good last night but Stanford made the plays yes. necessary I mean they made those big plays in that game can't wait for that SEC championship game Joel it's amazing you know all the talk about Andrew Luck and the success he's had in the National Football League trying to rebuild the Colts but you know Stanford just keeps rolling yeah. rolling along but well, it, it just goes to show you when you build a program that is centered around winning the line of scrimmage and that's what Stanford has built their front seven defensively one of the best in the country even though Jonathan Franklin and UCLA ran for over 200 yards on them the most rush yards that they've given up this season you know they built it on the front seven on the defense they built it with unbelievable recruiting in the offensive line they run that power scheme better than anybody and David Shaw has, has done a, a great job. You know, he's going to have to do some work this offseason, though. Some people are going to come calling for Pep Hamilton, their offensive coordinator, and Derek Mason, their defensive coordinator. Those guys are going to be on a lot of lists for head coaching opportunity. Good kick into the win. Gilbert still on his feet and wraps up and dropped at the 20-yard line. Got a flag on the far side. Side on the kicking team. Five yards, previous spot, and re kick. You can hear the wind blowing down on the field, so let's do it again. The marching back five on the offsides call. Clint Chelf awaits to get back on the field. Good choice to have him re kick this into the wind. Now you mark you your back you're five. Get, yeah, you got to get better field position. A lot of times you'll see him just take the five at the end of the run or so, something along those lines. And Mike Gundy, immediately, he was adamant. He was way out. He was about 10 yards onto the field. You know, give him the kick sing, signal like, hey, kick it again. I know Darius told us earlier maybe 15 miles an hour down on the field. Joel, I'm telling you, those flags are straight right now. It's picked up. It's a tough kick from left to right. So Aaron Jones will try it again. Punches it short. Oh, it takes a wicked hop. It's out. And a pile up at the 30-yard line. And a lump in the throat of Mike Gundy the size of that football.
And they're going to point Cowboy way. So Chelf and company back to work. When we come back, they're down 14 with 6.16 to play here in the third quarter. Oklahoma State Baylor. Waco, Texas. Senior day. Well, Joel Baylor hopes this is the day they turn the tide in their series with Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, the last six, been very dominant. 48 to 22 on average. 293 rush yards per game. The Baylor up 34-20. And their offense is playing really well. There's over six minutes left in this third quarter. Near side, and a big run by Randall. Well, he runs upright, Joel. 6'1", 200-pounder. Doesn't have that lean, but he just strides, strides out. And now over 100 yards. Joseph Randall, 111 yards. He came into the game averaging 110 per game, which was tops in the Big 12. Continues to have a fantastic year. That's the eighth time he's run for 100 this season or more. What a weapon to have. Flags on the snap. False start, number five offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Josh Stewart gets an early start. Oh, those setbacks, just so frustrating on first down for an offense. Now you're just going to be constantly behind. Anytime you get behind the chains, unless it's third down, you need a conversion. My motto as a quarterback, get half of it back. Get to about second and seven and a half here. You'll be in good position. Play clock at five. Quick throw, far side. Pitch and catch, it's on the hands of Charlie Moore. And Joel got about half back to the 49. About there, and that's exactly what a quarterback should do. And now it's okay to check the ball down. The last thing you want to do is try to get all of it back then. Now you're in a third or second and 15 situation. At this point, at second and eight, you can still check the ball down if you get in trouble and have an opportunity to convert at third down. It's just thinking ahead a step. Situational play so important, especially in these spread offenses, and that's why Clint Jelf has done a good job for Oklahoma State, the older of the three quarterbacks for the Cowboys. Play action, stands tall in the pocket, pressure, side steps, throws a long, deep ball, there's contact, and the flags stay in the pocket. Charlie Moore looked like he was bumped inside the 15-yard line. No flag. Sam Hole was on the coverage. Here's the end of the play. It looks like there was some maybe some incidental contact. Hole was looking back at the ball, which is going to help him, but there was definitely some contact there. Now third down and eight. Three wide receivers near side. They're showing blitz. Chelf and McDonald, they set up the screen. A ball in the hands of Blake Webb, 85, but it's well short of the first down. Hager, the middle linebacker, coming strong on pressure on Chelf. That's a bad answer against an all-out blitz. You've got to attack the zones that they vacate, not throwing the ball all the way to the sidelines. Great job by Phil Bennett, understanding the formation and the tendency from Oklahoma State right there, sending that all-out pressure. They didn't have an answer in the middle of the field, and now Baylor forces the punt. Terrific job defensively. Swim shot, 46 yards a kick. That's top ranked in the Big 12, and a fair catch taken by Levi Norwood. That's a 31-yard punt. Baylor with the football when we come back on Fox. Fox College football is sponsored by the all-new Ford Fusion. Go further. So time to check the four game summary. Yeah, for Oklahoma State, it's been Clint Jelf. 169 yards, but a couple of turnovers. Those two turnovers resulting in seven points for Baylor. And Nick Florence has been sensational today. 443 yards total offense. He's averaging 575 this season. He's a guy on the field right now looking to get this Baylor offense going. They have not been able to produce as many points as they would have liked in the last three series. 
Nick Florence has been doing a lot of damage in the run game. 14 carries for 72 yards, averaging about five a pop. That's where they Pressure. Finally, they collapse on the Baylor offensive line. Calvin Barnett came strong. The uh, J.C. transfer out of Navarro, J.C. I was just going to say, that's where they've tried to attack. Oklahoma State is that run game. Bad snap there from Ivory. Ivory Wade moved from tackle to center this year. Poor snap. Nick Florence can't handle it. Second down. That ball floats away to the Baylor sideline. And, and all of a sudden, I mean, it just flipped ever so suddenly. And the momentum so clearly with Oklahoma State right now, Baylor's offense is the one that looks out of sorts. They can't get the ball to Terrence William, the Bolitnikoff Award finalist. They're having trouble running the football now because of the pressures being dialed up by Bill Young. Baylor 5 of 10 today on third down conversions. They need 13 to keep this drive alive. 17-yard line. Florence steps up and throws. Open, close, and the push forward. Norwood, first down, Baylor. You have to know where the chains are. Big conversion for Nick Florence and the Baylor Bears. That's an answer right there after Oklahoma State had won on first and second down to answer and move the chains. That's a big completion. Pick up a 15. Florence floats it out with a bubble screen. Chopped down at the 40-yard line. That ball comes out. I didn't hear a whistle. Oklahoma State points one way, Baylor the other. Definitely did come loose. That's Goodley. Antoine Goodley. Ball's loose. Baylor gets on it. Who is that at the bottom of the plier? Boy, Ivory Wade from his center position. He was the one plowing in there. Big number 78. The Baylor retains possession, 42-yard line. Seastrunk in the backfield for the Bears on first and 10. Play clock to one. Got the snap away. Florence out of the pocket. Sets the throw, runs. And a shoestring tackle down around the 45. For the Sam backer, the strong side backer, Sean Lewis. A great shoestring tackle out of Missouri City, Texas. A couple of years ago, he's a first-team freshman All-American. Tackles in space. They become such an issue when you're facing Baylor. And Sean Lewis is able to get Nick Florence down to the ground. He would have picked up about four or five more yards if he was unable to get that tackle. See strong. A little stutter. And Oklahoma State collapses. You know, you make a great point about college football today and the open space that has really it's become commonplace now, especially in Big 12, Pac-12 play. You've got to be a tackler in open space. People think that defense is on the decline. I just think that offense has been evolving to a point where it's difficult to play defense. The space created just puts so much of an emphasis on open field tackling, and that's just a tough skill to learn to do. Look at this field right now. Look how spread it is. You've got a wide receiver above the numbers. Up top, you've got a wide receiver below the numbers. And then all of this space created. Look at all these seams in the defense that then you can go and attack offensively. Play clock to two. Got it away, Florence. Throws it on a string, and the catch by Goodley. Well, he has that ability, Joel, to make a make a throw when they need one. Was and it, it's a first down at the 41. And what's interesting for me, Craig, about this offense, that formation that we just talked about, is that the check down routes are actually on the outside. So they create the space in order to get those big seams in the middle, and then that's where they attack the defense. They drop out on the outside, and Nick Florence knows, if I'm taking too much time, just flip it out there towards the sideline. Glasgow Martin just checked in, gets the handoff, and is pushed back around the 36-yard line. The type of defensive player that you'll start seeing in college football is just different. It's going to start moving down. You know, safeties are going to be guys that are going to have to play linebacker and also blitz the quarterback. Linebackers are guys that are going to have to cover like safeties but also be able to put their hand in the ground like a defensive right. lineman. Hybrid players are at a premium now defensively because of the space created by the spread offense. If you can play a couple positions in high school football, you, you're going to be well recruited. Make a great point. Linebackers become rush ins who can put their hand down. 
Florence wants that home run ball up top. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Tevin Reese. Zach Craig, good coverage in the end zone. And Reese had that big play ball in the second quarter, went 75 yards to make it a 24-3 Baylor lead. What defensive back coaches will tell their players is late hands. Get that hand up late, right when you see the eyes start getting big for the reception. That was a terrific job by Zach Craig. At the last second, the hand goes through the bread basket to break it up. That's picture perfect defense. Now third down and five. Final seconds of the third quarter. Seastrunk trying to hit the edge. Breaks one tackle, hits the corner, first down, out of bounds, 26 yard line. So important to wrap up that initial, the initial hit, and you are so valuable as a running back, Joel, as you know, if you can run through a tackle and pick up yards after contact. And Nico Ornelas, number 41, he had an opportunity at Seastrunk early in that play. Was unable to get him down, and guess what? They convert, and Oklahoma State stays on the field. Baylor doing an excellent job. When they need plays, they're moving the chains. That ends the third quarter here in Waco. Baylor 34, Oklahoma State 20 on Fox. Fox College Football is presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Baylor Bears, 34-20. Early start, Bears 17-3. Second quarter even, third quarter they traded field goals. But right now the Bears trying to put more points on the board here as we start quarter number four. Florence. Pumps, pumps, puts it up. Incomplete in the end zone. And again, great recovery by the secondary of Oklahoma State. And laid hands again from the secondary. Doing a great job of fighting off those fade routes deep into the end zone. There is a flag on the field. The double move route, defensive back saves it and gets those laid hands up through the bread basket. Terrific job saving yet another touchdown on this drive. So they pick up the flag. It'll be second down. Go. Glasgow Martin for the pads pop as he's inside the 15 yard line. Greg Bullerjack and Joe Platt have been watching Baylor try to find their way to the end zone once again. Turnovers again has been an issue today. Baylor, Florence, really good football game. This is the critical part of this game right now. 14 point lead for the Baylor Bears. Now they're trying to take that 21 point lead, but they have stalled out a couple of times here in the last couple of series when they've gotten to this point down inside the red zone. A missed field goal, actually two missed field goals, one block, one miss. Gotta find those opportunities to put points on the board. Lawrence, the handoff, Martin pulls his way inside this 10. They'll mark him at the nine yard line. Also in college football, specialty players. I mean, when you get a player like Glasgow Martin, who's so effective inside the red zone, Seastrunk can help you as well. They throw that ball ooh, through the hands, incomplete, of Sampson. And he took a shot on the incompletion. Oklahoma State has really been rolling through their defensive backs again. Another wave of Oklahoma State players running on four in, four out. The substitution's taking place. Kevin Peterson, a true freshman, has played today. Zach Craig, we saw him with a couple of plays, including that last one. Justin Gilbert has been on Terrence Williams, and Terrence Williams has had a very quiet day for the likes of a Politnikoff Award finalist. And you got to give a lot of credit to Justin Gilbert, the junior from Huntsville, Texas. Third down and five. You're looking at the Baylor spread. Five wide, Florence. And now whistles will stop play. And there's a flag on the far side. On the offense, five yard penalty, third down.
Well, that microphone on Greg Burks is whistling. The wind is blowing. Wow. Here. Now it's at the back for Baylor this entire quarter, and they've got the 14 point lead. Huge advantage right now for the Bears, especially ball on the 14 yard line, getting ready to try to go in. Play action over the middle. Quick toss and the tackle by Shamil Gary. Levi Norwood with the catch, but Gary right on his back. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Narp Riles is not sending Aaron Jones, the kicker, on the field. They'll go for it with quick tempo. Up to the line of scrimmage. Hopping over the top. Don't think he made it. I don't know. Based on where these linesmen Excellent run in, it looks like he had to get the nose of the football to the four-yard line based on where the chains are at. This will be a good look. Boy, that's awful close. Caleb Levy, the junior ringleader of this defense, highly recruited out of high school. He was the one that went up and over the top, number 45. Got a player down. They're pushing the players back as the officials are trying to eyeball where the spot is just inside the five. And Joel, the chains on the far side are coming in. I'm, I'm with you. They had to hit the four yard line. I don't think they're there. I don't think, I think this is, might be, if they got it, it's by an inch. Looks a couple inches short from here though. So Oklahoma State holds defensively and Baylor turns it over on downs. Cowboys have it when we come back to Waco. Fox College Football is sponsored by Call of Duty Black Ops 2, available now. Rated mature by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And by Pizza Hut. Make it great. Calvin Barnett was shaken up for Oklahoma State, was able to walk off the field. He was down for a while. Big, big series defensively for the Cowboys. They stopped Baylor at the four and a half yard line. They did review that call and it did stand. So Chelsea and company back to work. Down by 14. Passes from his own end zone up top and it's incomplete. Josh Stewart, the intended receiver. Really nice play by the corner on that side. Second down. That was Chance Casey, number nine, on the far side. It's a smash concept where they run a hitch underneath and a corner on top, and he did a nice job of forcing that throw over the top and then falling back into its lap. Second down inside the five. Randall. Well, he took a shot, no gain. He's down at the four-yard line. They're marking at the five. Rodney Chadwick. You don't think maybe this is the final game of the regular season, but they're hitting. That was Ahmad Dixon. Number 26, 35 games played, 94 tackles, and Baylor a great chance to get off the field on third down. Crowd is up. Chell dances in the end zone, far side. Tough throw. It's going to be close, pushed out of bounds. Right at the 15 yard line. Right at the 15. This is Blake Webb, a true freshman. He's short of the chains, he knows it. And he's coming right to your couch. How tough a throw is that? That's very tough to the field. The field, when I say the field, that means the wide side, especially all the way to the sidelines like that. And you know you're taking a risk as a quarterback because it's third down and you're throwing that ball short of the chains. Relying on a true freshman, Blake Webb, to catch that ball, get up field, and get the first down, which he did. That's a big play for Oklahoma State. Needed nine, got nine and a half. Flush downs and some room for the Cowboys. Trying to set up a screen pass and they dump it down into the ground. Jeremy Smith, the intended receiver. 
And Nick Johnson read that beautifully. He's a defensive tackle, junior college transfer from Navarro Junior College, 295 pounds. He saw the screen and started running with that guard. The guard was trying to get out and won what's called the sidewalk. That's the coaching point. But Nick Johnson was right on his hip blowing that screen apart. Second down. Shelf, shot steps, troubled, and then throws it incomplete. It's been a hard hitting ball game. Let's get an injury update. Here's Darius. Yeah, guys, I just spoke to the training staff about Calvin Barnett. And he's going to go back in the game. He's shooken up a little bit. But what also happened this last play was Joseph Randall, the running back for Oklahoma State, came off to the sidelines with a bit of an ankle injury. So the training staff just retaped it. Looks like he's going to be able to go back in the game as well. All right, thank you, Darius. Well, as you know, tape is football, man, football player's best friend. That's right. Three of nine on third down today for Oklahoma State. They need 10. Pressure. Chell throws. Incomplete. Got a flag. At the 37-yard line. That's going to be a defensive hold call on Baylor. Holding number nine defense. Ten yard penalty, first down. That's Chance Casey. Had a big game last week against Texas Tech with eight total tackles. He was on the top side of the formation in one on one coverage on third down. They brought the house. Boy. Rough call. That's a, a ticky tack holding call on third down. That gives Oklahoma State first down and nearly intercepted by Baylor's secondary. Incomplete 45-yard line. It was Chadwick who had a chance to take that one away. Or was it Dixon? Second down. Ball over the middle. Those linebackers doing a great job falling underneath that coverage. Quick throw over the top, incomplete. And the wind, there as you said, it was breezy to start the game, but continues to, to howl here in Waco. Yeah, well, we talked earlier that it was at 15 miles per hour. Well, now at this point in the game, add 10 miles per hour to it. The wind is at 25 miles per hour, so it is absolutely going to affect the passing game for both teams. Oklahoma State looking into the teeth of that wind right now. And a timeout, Cowboys. Well, step aside. Big third down. Baylor up 14 on Fox. Well, you look at the 2012 first round draft pick for quarterbacks that came out of this Big 12 conference. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Started by RG3. Ryan Tannehill, of course, with AM, but that was when they were in the Big 12 conference. This year, their first year in the SEC. And Brandon Whedon, both those teams in action here today. It was Whedon against RG3 last year when Oklahoma State and Baylor tangled. Now, Clint Jelf and Nick Florence, and they've done a spectacular job filling in for those two, respectively. Florence has been Amazing today. He's working with 300 yards passing. This crowd's alive on third down and 10. Just under 12 minutes left to play in the fourth quarter. Chell pressure throws, dumps it underneath, and not much. That's a tough, tough throw when you know you're going to get hit. McAllister with the tackle on Isaiah Anderson, number 82. And Oklahoma State again not giving answers to their quarterback. This system has answers, and Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator from Baylor, is dialing up these pressures on third down, and they're not trying to take advantage of the interior seams. When Sharp needs a big punt, oh, the line drives it. Norwood pedals back inside his own 20 yard line. Cowboys special teams nearly overran the coverage. And Baylor will start the drive at the 41-yard line. Timeout on the field with 10.43 to play. 
Baylor 34, Oklahoma State 20. The UPS Team Performance Index is a statistical measure that looks at the efficiency of a team's offense, defense, special teams, and miscues to define their competitive advantage. You can check out this week's rankings to see that Alabama is at the top of the UPS Performance Index. A look at the logistics behind a winning team. Most of the season, it was Kansas State. There's a flag dropped at the 40-yard line. All start. Five-yard penalty. Baylor has rushed the ball for 227 yards, and even though they get backed up five yards on first down, and they're a high-powered offense, they, they can throw, they got a Bolitnikoff Award finalist in Terrence Williams. You got to think that at this point, a 14-point lead, you're going to start seeing a slower pace and a lot of run game. Run it is to the edge. Seastrunk runs with attitude. Just like his running mate, Glasgow Martin, he refused to go out of bounds at the 49-yard line, first and 10, Baylor. And he's explosive. You can tell. There's, he's got that step to him, that first step, very quick. I don't see a flag that looked like a face mask. I saw something strange just like you did, Craig. I don't know if it was a face man. No, it looked uh, like he just had him by, by the, the shoulder. Yeah, good tackle there by well, Alex Elkins. Tell you what kind of sold you a little bit thinking it was a face man, just his head snapped back. Yeah, the turn of it, the spin. I thought the exact same thing when I saw it live, but Alex Elkins with a terrific tackle from Blinn Community College right here in the Texas Air Force. Blinn is where Cam Newton played. A lot of guys from Blinn all over the country. Terrific program in the junior college ranks there at Blinn, Texas. It is a Division I factory indeed. Third down short. Stumbling is Seastrunk at midfield. That brings up fourth down. They're going to be confident to punt this away. I tell you, that with the win yes. and what their defense has been able to do, their defense ranked 119th in college football in total defense, 116th in scoring defense. And Art Bryles, he's so confident in what Phil Bennett and his defense has been able to do today against the Cowboys. He's putting them back out on the field. And they're going to get an automatic first down out of this. Trying to anticipate the rush. Oklahoma State breaks through. They anticipated the snap, and here they come, and now they're going to get the first down. Well, they're going to talk about this. Mike Gundy is saying that the center flinched with the football. False start on the snapper. I'll be. Great eyes. Zach Northern is the snapper. Here he is. I want you to watch if he flinches with his arms or any part of his body. You see how he snapped his head up to try to deceive the defense? That's what they called after it looked like an offsides. Mike Gundy says thumbs up. Nice job. First punt for Baylor in this game. Roth gives it a ride with a win behind his back. Turns it over. Oh, it kicks back at the 10-yard line. Look like your golf shot. A little, a little back me up towards the pin. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. At right? the 12-yard line. <laughs> College football's biggest championship games are seen here on Fox tonight. Big Ten title as 12th-ranked Nebraska will battle Wisconsin with a trip to the Rose Bowl on the line. Coverage of the Big Ten championship begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, right here on Fox. Bo, Bo Pelini in Nebraska quietly another 10-win season, 7-1 in the Big Ten. They lost, of course, to Ohio State, went undefeated, but ineligible for postseason play. So Wisconsin with Penn State and Ohio State Finishing above them in the standings, Wisconsin gets that trip to Indy. They face off tonight. Chance for a Rose Bowl for Oklahoma State. Back to work. Chelf throws it up top. Tough throw. First down, 32-yard line. Wow, that was the best throw of the day from Chelf. This was a phenomenal throw. All the way to the sidelines, just drops it over the shoulder of Stewart. Terrific throw. Go into the wind. Randall. Stacked up, no gain at the 32. Lackey in on that tackle. Well, what a game he has had. The pick six had one last week. Ran back 55 yards. Yeah. 
Second down. Chuck throws. Spins it in, and Stewart makes the catch. And again, Bader dropped back. And there wasn't a bear within five to seven yards around him. They tightened down the formation, and there was a bunch set for the bottom of the screen, and that's what allowed Josh Stewart to bust out on that wheel route from inside to outside, stretching that defense, finds himself wide open. A game of 23, Chuck has room to run, and he trots out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Baylor wanted a holding call there at Chelf left the pocket they didn't get it and Oklahoma State now continues to move the ball they've got a second and three eight minutes to play in the ball game down by 14. Cowboys can punch one here in here with the next minute or two should set up an interesting uh, ending here in Waco well, 14 points this clock has become somewhat of an issue for Mike Gundy and the Cowboys Baylor's defense has played absolutely excellent football today held Oklahoma State to 404 total yards on the day Quick throw, close to a first down, catch Blake Jackson. And Chelf is in a rhythm right now. You just feel that, the ball's coming out of his hand cleanly. He's throwing the ball accurately. His feet are in rhythm in the pocket. Oklahoma State, now they run it with Randall. Terrence Lloyd with the tackle. The left end, number 11. Inside the red zone at the 19, call it the 18-yard line. Eighth play of this drive, and now the officials step in. Timeout. Timeout call. We'll step aside. 7.08 to play down the stretch in Waco. Fox College Football is sponsored by AT&T. Rethink Possible. 34-20, 7.08 remaining. Big 12 finale between Oklahoma State and Baylor. Last six games, the Cowboys have had their way in the fourth quarter, a 58-28 advantage. They put the run package in now. J.W. Walsh is in at quarterback number four. Ball start. Ball start. Number 68 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. That's Lane Taylor, the senior right guard. To his stat is amazing. He has not allowed a sack when the day started. 774 snaps this year. I think he's grading out high game after game. But he jumps. Walsh touch runs, nice get back, and slips and slides down to the 16-yard line. As we talked about before, got about half of it back. Now they're in a second and eight situation where they can keep Walsh on the field and continue to try to hammer away with this run game. Clint Jelf watching on the sidelines. Clock under seven minutes. It's a 14-point Bayer lead. Walsh has stood up and dropped 15-yard line. Third down and long. Terrence Lloyd with the tackle. And Jeff still on the sidelines. Joel, you and I were just talking just how well he has thrown the football on this drive into the wind. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm really surprised right now that, that Oklahoma State has done this. I understand on a first down changeup, but to stick with J.W. Walsh, who's completely cold, I know he's thrown for 66% on the year, but Clint Chelf was throwing absolute dimes on this series. Now they're taking their chances. Pistol formation with J.W. Walsh. Walsh is a red zone guy to go play action on the rollout. Pressure, dump it out. They set up the screen. It's caught Randall inside the 10 and a first down at the six-yard line. And missed tackles in open field. That's what Joseph Randall gives you. Terrific open field move. The only reason Oklahoma State continues on this drive with a first down. Walsh, hurry up. Offense, he'll take the direct snap. Right side. Oh, took a hard lick inside the five. Mike Hicks, hello. I gotta hear that. Wow. Oh, you kidding me? 
Well, Mike he had Hicks, a senior from China Spring, Texas, lays the hammer on J.W. Walsh. Clock running under six to play. Second down. Touchdown, Walsh. Now this game taking a little turn with five and a half to play. Oklahoma State had to have it, and J.W. Walsh, a terrific move, fakes out two Baylor Bears. Sam Hole and Eddie Lackey walks into the end zone, and the Cowboys have life in Waco, Texas. Extra point to come, come by Quinn Sharp. Three-time All-American has it lined up, follows through, and it is good. Seven-point game, five and a half to go. J.W. Wall celebrates in Waco. Seven-point game between Baylor and Oklahoma State. Let's go back and talk about the Cowboys and their quarterback situation this year. Three quarterbacks, first school in Big 12 history that the three quarterbacks have thrown for a thousand yards. Injury has played a part, yes. But you know what? They have a lot of different looks. Chelf, Walsh shows you what he can do in the red zone. Wes Lunt was a starter to start the season, the true freshman. He's thrown for over a thousand yards, 63%. Walsh came in for him. Chelf was actually the third string quarterback to start this year, but he's the junior. Walsh, just a red shirt freshman from Denton, Texas. Mike Gundy tells us that Clint Chelf at this point in the season, when you start getting to these critical situations, he's the type of guy that Mike Gundy trusts. He's been there before. He learned from Brandon Whedon, and he's done a nice job today bringing the Cowboys back and getting in this ballgame. Well, that drive went 11 plays, 88 yards, three and a half minutes off the clock, and it was capped off by the four-yard run by Walsh. Into the wind. 11-yard line. Jones. Outside. Flag is out, back at the 35-yard line. Boy, Darius Jones, did you see the breakaway speed? Another gear, but a flag. During the return, holding number 23 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. So wipe away that return and march it back 10. Now the question for me becomes, can they get their rhythm back? Speaking of uh, Baylor's offense, in such a good rhythm early in this game, they got stopped a couple of times in the red zone, and that type of momentum and belief is what allowed Oklahoma State to start playing so much better here in the fourth quarter. Can Baylor get back to what was so successful for them, which was formation in Oklahoma State? They get them spread out and then run the football. They've got that wide formation going right now. Low snap, hand it off, big hole, up the middle, C-Strunk. Goodbye! 40, 30! 15, 10, stumbles, touchdown! Looked like he pulled a hamstring, but he found the end zone. <laughs> 76 yards. What an effort from Lake Seastrom. The formation got him right here. You see, he grabs at something. He pulls something, and he keeps going. He just barely gets himself all the way into the end zone in front of Justin Gilbert. This is where he feels it. Oh, something definitely happened, and he continued to go. He got himself all the way into the end zone. What an effort from Seastrunk. He felt that, that hamstring tighten up or pull around the 35-yard line. I thought he was going to stumble and go down. Right there. How he was hopping and skipping, still keeping the speed up to find the end zone, 76 yards. He is getting a standing ovation. As he should. Here at Floyd Casey Stadium. That is the ninth one-play touchdown drive this season and the second today by Baylor. Yeah. 
Extra point is through the uprights. Seastrong from 76. 41-27, Baylor. Forty-one twenty-seven. As the trainers look at C. Strong, and that brings us to the Reese's perfect play. Well, first of all, they did exactly what we talked about. They spread them out, got the middle of the field wide open, and then attacked it with their running game. Lake C. Strong. I can't tell you how bad it hurts to pull a muscle, and C. Strong just fought all the way through it to the end zone. What an effort, Darius, as a running back and a guy. Uh, that was unreal. He had 35 yards still to go with a pulled muscle and still got in the end zone. C. Strunk with 16 carries, 178 yards, and the touchdown with 5'11 left to play. Darius, I was just, he was at about the 35. Yeah, guys, and, and this was thing, crazy. If you've ever pulled a muscle or any kind of hamstring or anything, you have no idea how impossible it is to even walk. So the fact that he could go another 25, 30 yards and make it to the end zone is even more impressive than the run, in my opinion. Darius, he's got everybody on the team. They're walking over to him, giving him a five. I mean, you talk about inspirational, what he just did for this Baylor team. That's exactly what Baylor football is all about, and I can guarantee you that Art Bryles is, is very proud of the young man. No doubt about it. Well said. Art Browse has done such a good job here in Central Texas, and you got to credit a guy like Ian McCall, the athletic director for Baylor, who has built and fostered an environment of success across all programs. Their baseball program has done a heck of a job. Obviously, their women's basketball team won the national championship with Brittany Griner, and earlier today, the Baylor men beat Kentucky in a basketball game. They've had a lot of success here over the last couple of years. And Art Browse very proud to be a Baylor Bear. Self goes back to work, throws it far side, and boy, they're just stacking up the yards in this game. Lackey runs out. Josh Stewart out of bounds. That that run, by the way, by C. Strunk, that will live in lore. By the way, that that story will grow as the years. Oh, he pulled up at, at the 50. <laughs> It'll be the opposite 45 the next year. On the hands, complete. Josh after, Stewart. After that, it's both hamstrings. <laughs> yeah. And he still ran through it. Oh, what a sight. This crowd appreciated it. That was unbelievable. 41-27, Thaler on top of 23rd ranked Oklahoma State, just under five minutes left. Ooh, nearly intercepted behind Austin Hayes, the freshman out of San Antonio. Valuable experience for next season. 6'2", 170-pounder. Third down and two. Quick throw, far side. Hayes has it, and more. And he has hit hard, out of bounds at the 41. Good play call. Getting that first down, an easy first down. You take that run game out of the mix. You make it just about a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Oklahoma State was able to win that matchup, move the chains. Shelf goes right back to work underneath. Got a one-handed, incomplete as Randall. So a great out, Chelf. I, I like his arm strength, and he's been impressive throwing the ball hard into the win and on target. It, it seemed like early in the game he was on point. In the middle of the game, they seemed to lose rhythm offensively with the blitz package of Baylor. And now late in the game, he's found that rhythm again, trying to get his team back in this ball game. Three wide receiver package on the near side. They throw far side incomplete. Right now, though, like on that last play, you're starting to see some lazy feet from Clint Chell. In the shotgun, if you're going to get that shotgun snap and throw a slant, your feet have to be right with you so you can deliver that ball on target. If your feet are lazy at all, that ball will be behind you. That was the 45th pass attempt by Clint Chell. How about some tired legs out there? The 423 left to play. Chell tucks and runs. Swarmed under at the 40-yard line, and Sam Hall made the initial hit. Really comes down to this play. Baylor's defense has played really well for Phil Bennett. They got one snap here left in this ball game. Put an exclamation point on a senior day victory here in Waco. Will it go to Randall or Stewart? Fourth and nine. Pressure from the edge. 
They wanted Joseph Randall on a hot slant. He wasn't looking back, and the ball falls incomplete. This defense did a heck of a job. They gave up a lot of yards. I understand that, but the whole Oklahoma State, top five in the nation in scoring offense, came in averaging 45 points a game, number one in the conference, third in the nation. They've held up to 27 points so far with 353 left in this ball game. That's an outstanding job from Phil Bennett and the Baylor Bear defense. They've been much maligned over the course of this season. A defense that, as far as total defense goes, is next to last in the country. And they flat showed up today. They played hard and did a great job. Glasgow Martin, Martin, the ball carrier, as Baylor will like to run some clock right now. Darius, what's the update on Seastrom? Well, the training staff is telling me that it was a cramp in his quad. So his quad cramped up in mid-run. So luckily for them, it's not like a pulled muscle or anything. At least that's a diagnosis at this point. So. He probably will not go back in the game, I'm told, but they are classifying it as just a cramp in the quad. All right, so then here's the test. Could you run 35 <laughs> yards at full speed with a cramped quad? I could not run 35 yards with a stump toe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what c strong has got to do is hydrate. That's, that's right. Now Mark. it just becomes about holding on to the football. Yeah. Cowboys trying to pull that ball away from Glasgow Martin. Make sure you stay tuned tonight. It's the Big Ten championship game here on Fox with Nebraska 12th ranked against Wisconsin. The Huskers and the Badgers. We've got a timeout with 3.04 to go. That cramp's starting to loosen up a little bit. They should have played it up. They just got bowl practice coming up, right? I mean, you can. Uh, well, we've seen some good running today. And tonight, we'll highlight a couple of good running backs as well in the Big Ten title matchup. Uh, Monday Ball. Guys set the NCAA record for touchdowns in a career. 79. We saw him earlier this season in a disappointing loss, I know, for them at Oregon State, although Oregon State turned out to have a terrific season for Mike Riley. But ball in Wisconsin going in there, trying to get a third trip to the Rose Bowl in the past three seasons. And a very disappointing season for them to be saved with a win tonight. Broke a couple of tackles, Antoine Goodley. So Taylor Martinez, his career at Nebraska, 30 games started, over 6,200 yards passing, rush yards. Look at the passing, rush touchdowns. And it's been a long time since Nebraska has won a conference championship. You know, you wouldn't think that because of all the success they've had over the years, but those championship games just a few years ago against Colt McCoy and, and the Texas Longhorns. Remember the last second victory for Texas in, in a game in which Indominus Sue was so dominant, really burst on the national scene. And people were talking about him for the Heisman Trophy, like they all remember. Indominus Sue went to New York as a Heisman finalist after that game. Oklahoma State just used her last time out. It's a fourth and four. And Baylor will punt. Only their second punt in this game. Rock averaging 44 yards a beat on the season. Gets it up. Fair catch, 15-yard line. Charlie Moore with the fair catch in Oklahoma State. We'll have the football with 249 remaining. And don't forget, this January, Fox Sports is proud to bring you exclusive coverage of one of the most historic bowl games of the season. Coverage of the 77th Cotton Bowl Classic live from Cowboy Stadium begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. That's Friday, January 4th. And you'll see it only here on Fox. Baylor two minutes and 49 seconds away from their first win over Oklahoma State, Joel, since 2005. And the Bears won it here, 
This will be Art Briles' first victory over Oklahoma State. Two forty-two to go. Second down, ten. Gel from the gun. Steps and throws on the sideline is Randall. He's pushed out at the 22-yard line. Coach Bryles told us that after last year, they got five guys off their offense leaving to the NFL. Robert Griffin III, maybe the most recognizable college football player in the last decade. He said this was really a, a critical season for them and, and what they built here at Baylor. And so he made it out to be, it, it was a what's your name type of season. What's your identity? Who are you? What type of player are you? What type of university do you play for? And they've come out and just give them a lot of credit. They're going to move to seven and five, four and five in Big 12 play after losing Robert Griffin the third. I mean, a heck of a job done by this coaching staff led by Art Bryles. What he's built here in Baylor is absolutely special. They're going to get the new stadium in a couple of years in 2014. Underneath to Randall, there's a flag out. You know, speaking of Oklahoma State now, with Gundy and company, they're very excited about how young this team mm -hmm. actually yeah. is. Yeah. And how many players, of course, some early injuries, some red shirts, and also some, re uh, some the recruiting class has been strong. And so they've got quarterback strength and depth and also at the wide receiver. Holding number 26 defense, 10-yard penalty, first down. They've actually got a chance. They've got a, a situation where Kai Staley and Tracy Moore could be getting extra years at Oklahoma State. If that happens and they're ruled eligible for next season, that means only three touchdowns scored this year, all by Isaiah Anderson. All but three would be coming back. I mean, that's quite a, a productive unit coming back. And that's, of course, if they get those two guys back. And Tracy Moore, of course, a sensational player injured early in the season for them. They get Josh Stewart back. Joseph Randall's just a junior. Clint Jelf, all three of these quarterbacks back for the Cowboys. An interesting battle in during spring ball and who's going to try to capture the starting position come fall. It, Jelf's know, been impressive. I like the arm. Has, he has, and he's going to have an opportunity now during bowl practice and spring ball to really solidify his starting spot on this ball club. Baylor brings the house. Cowboys can't convert. Drop ball at the 10 yard line by Austin Hayes. How important is bowl week or oh, bowl month? Because so you get important. so many extra, both these teams headed to bowls. Yeah. So you get extra practice time. Especially when you're young. You look at programs that year in and year out are in those bowl games and their veterans play even better than other schools veterans. You know, you miss three straight bowls, you're missing out on the equivalent of essentially a full season of practice. Great point. As Randall's taken down. Depending on the bowl you go to, you could get 20 practices. You could. If you're which playing is more it, than spring football. Yes, if you play in January or late December, yeah, you get a lot of time. Third down. Chelf throws end zone. Touchdown. David Glidden. First time we've called his name today, number 13. He's about three deep on that chart on the inside receivers, and he is wide open. Yeah, for the first time today, Baylor looking around at each other in the secondary saying, hey, who's supposed to get that guy? They've been so solid all day long, and Glidden finds that seam in the middle, runs right down the hash mark, untouched for the touchdown, and Oklahoma State crawls back. Still got a shot in this game. Now sharp automatic as he hits the PAT, Glidden the touchdown, and it's a 41-34 ball game, 116 left to play. Oklahoma State, though, no timeouts, two remain for Baylor. Comes down to the onside kick. Let's see, uh, let's do the math. 6-2-12, 1,226 yards of offense. And both of them so balanced. Look at them. Each of these teams 
two of the four teams nationally that average over 200 yards rushing and 300 yards passing on the season. So balanced, both of them, Baylor leading the Big 12 in, in total rushing. Joseph Randall, the Big 12's leading rusher, rusher. Randall, 148 yards today. Baylor. We got this. Done a heck of a job on the ground today. Highlighted by that Lake Seastrunk scamper with the cramp in his quad. Oklahoma State this year, 0 for 1 on onside kicks from Quinn Sharp, the three-time All-American. That last drive covered 10 plays, 84 yards, in just a minute, 33 off the clock. So here we go. All right, the officiating crew is going to huddle up here. I think the ball fell off of that tee. It may have. As the wind blew the ball off the tee yes. prior to being kicked. If it falls off the tee, it's a dead ball. Re-kick. As soon as it hit the ground off the tee, it is a dead ball. Correct ruling. Art Bryles hates it. But it is the correct ruling. So a re-kick. Well, Quinn Sharp took a swipe at it, and Wes Harlan came over and kicked it after it already come off, had come off the tee. So, oh, there it is again. Now, this is a problem because you can't execute a proper no. onside kick with, with a holder. holder. I was just thinking, I don't know if I've ever, I've never seen it attempted. Then try it again. And again, it comes off the tee. <laughs> Even the officials looking at themselves. Uh, this has never been practiced. No. I guarantee you, uh, this is the first time I have ever seen this. An onside with help. It's out. A late jump on the pile, and the officials will try to peel the onion here. Seven point game. And the signal is Baylor football. Never took that big hop. It was close though. That ball, that ball actually climbed up the pile. That's when those Oklahoma State guys started clamoring in, jumping on top of the pile. But Baylor recovers, and they'll be able to just kneel on this one. A couple of players injured on that pile up at the 45. That's Trahan, Brody Trahan, backup linebackers, plays, plays special teams. Had a few players down today, hard hitting. Tonight, more college football on Fox, Nebraska, Wisconsin for the Big Ten Championship. Jamil Gary finally gets up, number seven, walks off for Oklahoma State. Lake Seastrunk making the play of the day. I'm good. I'll be back. <laughs> Confident. Good to know. I'll be back. You, you're very good. good. 
I think he was knocked down by his own player. <laughs> this crowd's been edgy in this fourth quarter. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Baylor on their way to a seven and five regular season mark, four and five in Big 12 play, and Oklahoma State will drop to seven and five, and five and four in conference play. Keep an eye on these two teams next year. It's going to be interesting. A lot of youth, a lot, of, and a lot of mixed in with experience as well. You know, the the problem for Baylor is going to be the fact that they've got to replace Nick Florence. Now, two years in a row, where they're going to have to replace a, a highly productive player at the most important position on the field. So the final seconds will wind down here in Waco. 21 seniors walk off this field for the final time and a victory over Oklahoma State 41 to 34. Art Bryles now 32 and 30 in his career at Baylor. Well, let's go downstairs. Darius standing by with the head coach of Baylor, Art Bryles. Guys. Coach, you won four out of the last five games this season. How important was it today to come out here and play well for these seniors? Well, I mean, for a bunch of reasons. You know, first of all, we haven't played well against these guys, you know, the last few years. And, uh, you know, we did that today. That was a motivating factor for us. And, you know, it's like we've been saying for the last month. We feel like we're playing our best football right now in this stage of the season. And I think it's a tribute to our guys for hanging tough when times were tough. Coach, as the Baylor head coach, this is the first time that you yourself have actually beaten Oklahoma State. What is the emotion like? It's, you know, it, it's fine, Darius. I mean, our, our guys have battled hard. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for our fans and happy for our university. Lake C. Shrunk, the, the big, long 70-yard run that he had. He ends up coming up with the cramp in the quad. What, what's going on in your head as you're watching him try to struggle to get to the end zone? Yeah, I thought it was very inspiring to, to finish the run. You know, when you pull up, you know as a running back. And when you pull up and, and finish the job like that, I, to me, it was uh, in, incredibly inspiring. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on a great season. Appreciate it. Thank you. 608 yards of total offense by Baylor. We'll be right back with the AT&T Fox College Saturday postgame show. Stay tuned. And welcome to the AT&T Fox College Saturday postgame show. Here in Waco, Texas, Baylor outscores Oklahoma State 41-34. Lake Seastrunk, big game, 178 yards and a touchdown from 76 moments ago. An entertaining interview with our Darius Walker. And here with Lake Seastrunk. Lake, you had the 70-yard touchdown run. Just take us through what happened in this play. All I know... My block is eight. He locked up on everybody. As soon as I seen it, I just, hey, the crease, the boost is curved on. I felt everything kick. Then I caught, all I felt was my muscle tighten up so bad. And what's going through my head, I know God got me, regardless of what anything happens. And I just like, this is for my team. I'm bigger than me. It's for these seniors and for the people I play for every day. So that would, that's empowered me to pull through it and get the touchdown. Speaking of the people you play for, when you came off to the sidelines when you were making your way out, there was a standing ovation by this Baylor crowd. What, what kind of feeling went through your head when you saw everyone cheering you on? Uh, it's a wonderful feeling. It's like it's full of just like a bunch of tears. If I, if I didn't cry, I don't know what, what it would have been. But um, I think like the two years I went through, my name being drug in the mud, for all the things I haven't done, God, God had me through the whole process. God took me along to humble me, to show me what it was, what it felt like to be some, have something taken away from you when you feel like you're up here. When I humbled and came back down, I gave my life to him. All I can say is thank him and thank God and thank the people that enjoyed watching me play. Well, Lake, we certainly appreciate the time. Good luck. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you so much. God bless. All right, guys, back to you. Well, I know we enjoyed watching him play. I mean, entertaining player. Nick Florence, I know, loved having him really come on towards the end of the year. Of course, Lake Seastrunk transferred from Oregon, sat out the last couple of years. And then in the second half of this season, I think he was the real key for this Baylor offense. Winning four of the last five ball games, he was a big part of that. And that offense really flourished under Nick Florence and Lake Seastrunk. That was fun to watch. I thought Baylor really came to play. Those seniors, quality win for them in their last game here at home. Great working with you this, uh, yes, this year, my friend. We'll yes, see sir. you next fall. And uh, thanks for watching today. Entertaining ball game here in Waco. Senior day, 41-34 the final.